was watching I was watching I was watching the match and uh, I was kind of like my eyes were just sort of getting heavy and I was thinking what the fuck is this do you know what I mean what the f- it's not time to sleep yeah it's not sleep time but you know it, it happens so there you go that's, that's a that's a good way to start the podcast you know what I mean napping when you shouldn't so hey it's needed brother especially in this t- I think sometimes you feel like you need a nap when the weather is so bad outside or like the way it is so dark and gloomy yeah. wet cold and you're inside your own home and it's warm all of a sudden you're like actually nah, let me just close my eyes for a bit yeah or in your case nice. why are my eyes closing <laughs> yeah it's a good question to ask you know you have to ask yourself these questions now and again you know why are my eyes closing when they shouldn't be right now you know say, yeah. but uh no i feel i'll be honest i feel i feel refreshed it was like about an hour maybe an hour 15 or something like that and uh, i woke up i was like whoa fucking hell, that was weird but yeah. there you go yeah. There you go. That's what a nap during the day feels like. It does <laughs> to you. That's what it does to you, yeah? It's brilliant. It's brilliant. Um, I recommend it for people. I do recommend it. <laughs> no, mate. No, 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 no time to nap. You... No, All good, mate. Yeah. You've got All two good. Kids, no problem. You had a... can't really nap. We had a birthday party today, which was fucking insane, man. Insane. Went to it and they made a sign a weaver. A waiver? Weaver. Waiver. Yeah. Waiver. They made a sign yeah. a waiver and they were like, um, once you read they... through it, they were like, Oh, we don't hold any responsibility to any injuries, even if it's life-threatening, life-changing injuries. I was like, what the fuck are we going into? Bear in mind, this is for a four-year-old, five-year-old party. What the fuck? I know. I'd be scared to even just go there now. I'd be like, nah, I'm all right. Do you know what? I'm going home. I'm going I home. I didn't know this until we turned up. Once I turned up, it was too late then because uh, the little one was like, come we are, we are, we are. come on, come on, I want to. And I was like, yeah, yeah, we're going, we're going. And yeah, anyway, yeah. long story short, get in. It used to be an old converted, long story short, so I'm going to tell you the story. Full, I'm going to tell you the long version because that's what we're here for. We're here for Exactly. The come on, bro. Come on, bro. It was meant to be one of those gala bingos building. Oh, sorry, it was a gala uh, bingo. Let me try that again. Put my teeth in. Mm-hmm. It was a gala bingo building. Mm-hmm. Now he's been converted into some sort of a soft play, kids attraction sort of thing. Right, and, right, uh, right. It was just, all it was was just like an, a huge inflatable bouncy castle, like going, must have must have gone around. Like, do you remember in school, the whole uh, PE hall? Yes. But it yeah, must have yeah, been yeah. like that. It started from wall to wall. So like the full length of the PE hall. And then he used oh, to wow. do like a Z uh, S shape going up. So you kind of start on one end and keep going. It was, in, it was incredible. The downside was all ages were jumping in. And you can imagine boys who were 7, 8, 12. They were just like rummaging through as if they were like rugby American football trying to run yeah, with the yeah, ball. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Trying to do flips and shit. It's like, what are you mate, doing? What is this? I was like, tackling you, bro, relax. And then obviously I went in with a little one and he's like, that Kevin Howard went, hey, 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 oh, hey. I couldn't lose my balance. Like, what can you do? And I was like, this is why grown-ups don't go on the bouncers. Somebody kids. shuffling cards. <laughs> <laughs> been real, yeah, but uh, yeah, no, that, that's that's what we did today. And it was, to be honest with you, once I signed that waiver, it was scary. I don't know. Okay, so wait, so the waiver is basically yes, your kids are allowed here, but they will get injured. Is that what? Is basically that basically that? Basically that saying, give us your money, you may end up your child being injured, God forbid, and then all of a sudden it's like we have no or responsibility worse. for it. Or worse, or worse by the way, yeah. yeah like, oh, the some of the way some of these kids on? were going, like just rummaging through. But obviously, I stayed in front, or sorry, behind the little one to let her have a go, so nobody can get past her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Still, man, it's a flipping bounce car. You jump on one thing, it kind of boings back to you, ricochets, Costa and does, oh, yeah, just, does. Oh, you got oh, kids bouncing so off your chest and shit. Like, so what the many fuck is this? As well. So I was like, this trying to protect my one, like a huge hug. <laughs> and her friend was like, I want to. Well, I was nearly said. I nearly said the child's name there, but anyway, help me as well. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, You're on your own. You're on the other yeah, side. Yeah. You were like literally coming uh, out. Uh, not today. Out. Yeah. Roll out. <laughs> you are damn. Jump it on with you. Wow, that yeah. is. Uh, it would have that's... been fun if it was kind of just uh, just her age group. I'll give or take a year older, maybe yeah. a year younger. But uh, di- oh yeah, different abilities. When I say to you like boys who are 11, 12, you know what? It, you we were 11, 12, and we know how hyperactive point, we yeah. were that's and running point, yeah. and trying to show off. So yeah, that's literally what it was. You can kind of the older boys got caught in their own. Um, challenges and competition and who can do yeah. it the fastest and who can jump the furthest and who can this and so on yeah. Yeah. my little, elbow dropping little four-year-olds uh, and shit like what the oh, fuck is close. <laughs> yeah no no i'm joking i wasn't close but yeah no, that, that's what we did today and then obviously watch the match wow much wow that, i'll be honest with you right that that doesn't that doesn't sound like a very you know at ease sort of a uh, moment or, or or like you know a few hours you know what i mean because you always have to be on edge Oh, you had to be on edge, obviously, for these, you know, just in case the worst happened. But wow, that is, yeah, screw that shit. <laughs> You've got all this to look forward to, my guy. 
Because well, you, know, you, you know, never we'll switch see. off. To be fair, we'll for see. any of the we'll listeners see. who do have kids or toddlers now, and so on, you just like think to yourself, "Fuck!" Like, okay, what? Well, wait, wait, what? Hey, hey, because hey. they've got no sense of danger, bro. No sense of danger, and somehow they seem to think daddy can fix it all. They're like, "It's okay, daddy. If it breaks, you fix it." Ah, uh-uh. yeah. If that arm like, breaks, no, it's okay, daddy. That. You will, you will buy me a new one. No, daddy yeah. will not buy you a new one. What, what do you think? Like, daddy's got a Bugatti to keep. Are you joking? Do you know exactly. how expensive the tires are? Oh, yeah, you gotta, you gotta give that. You gotta put that through a car wash now and again do you know what I mean so that shit's expensive man <laughs> the diamond cleaning alloys and shit the fuck Sick. take the piss bro like, I was like nah nobody's gonna buy you shit you wanna you wanna ride in the Bugatti then no daddy will not buy you a new one <laughs> yeah no, wow that is no, that, that's literally where we're at I don't know if the listeners can relate or not but I'm sure they can because I'm the sure Bugatti, yeah, really I'm no sure no they, not I'm the sure Bugatti the whole thing of like daddy can fix it mommy can fix it it's okay if it breaks you just buy me a new one it's just like as if money grows on trees no sense of no, taking care of kids it's just you know how that felt like you know that was that we went through that phase it's i know i know it's no it, isn't, no, it, it, it like, isn't it isn't right i was talking to somebody about this and uh, i again I'm sure a lot of people can relate it feels like as if if you didn't have something as a child you want to try to ensure that your kids can never go without so i'm happy to admit this my parents obviously they weren't the wealthiest nor were they we weren't broke we weren't living under a bridge no. but obviously i didn't end up having all the gadgets or all the toys that my no, we did had. but it was like two three years later you know yeah two three years later right we, we were delayed PS5, we, were, we had delayed got well. a PS5. everybody on ps3 <laughs> that's when we got a ps2 and i was like no this is the wrong one but you wanted a ps2 four years ago <laughs> you said playstation right <laughs> yeah that's it hey i got my playstation 3 four years after it came out so uh, you know it's no, it is I, what it is like, mate i I was like no p play everybody was on ps2 i wasn't still on ps1 and then i remember right i think it was my brother or i or we together something we did like good grades or something it was like a reward and we they were like oh we'll buy you a ps2 we're like no ps2 is over now it's an xbox so the xbox had just come out, yeah, just 360. Come out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so then I ended up getting the xbox 360 because i was like listen might as well spend a little bit more and i can keep it for longer you know trying to negotiate with my of course, father of course yeah so yeah, so for that reason, I'm like, when she's like, I want this, I want that, and I'm like, it's how much is it? Oh, it's okay, yeah, go on. Yeah, and then I'm like, what am I doing? I'm building a monster. Yeah. I need yeah. to make we, sure she hears the no sometimes. It's it's, it's classed, on our class as delayed wealth. Do you know what I mean? That's what it is. Yeah, it's two, three years. Oh, yeah, I remember 2006, March 23rd, 2006. Oh, wow, you remember three. the date. Flip oh, man, my God. <laughs> PS3 had just come out, had just been launched. Because, again, we were excited because we had I had the PS2. Yeah. Uh, for a few years at that point so we were excited that ps3 were gonna, was going to come out but it was 420 quid and i'll remember the price it was 420 pounds and obviously you know you'd ask they'd be like hmm uh-huh sure but no that's not happening <laughs> daddy yeah, can make that, you a ps4 yeah, yeah, daddy yeah. can make you a ps3 at home i can get you the box <laughs> i can get you the box we can put your ps2 in and then pretend it's a ps3 but yeah and then in 2010 that's when i actually got christmas 2010 that's when i got my ps3 and it wasn't obviously wasn't brand new it was second hand from game but yeah. you know my, i remember my dad came home and he was like oh right this is gonna be a christmas present but is this the one that you wanted i was like what am i seeing a ps3 right here but again to me i didn't give a shit yeah, how, how old it was, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I fucking loved it no, every definitely. single moment. You know what I mean? Like, for me, for that's all that matters. And obviously, for kids, I don't have kids, so I can't really say. I'm going to be like Seth Rogen, where I'm just probably not going <laughs> to have kids, to be honest. I'm enjoying the, the single life. Without kids, I single mean, obviously. Life, no, without kids, that's what I'm saying. Shit, like, you know, kidless life. There it is. But this is, oh, there he goes. He's being hit around the face. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll put the sound effects later as well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, you're, you're right though. You're right. It was it, we never we were never short on the things that we wanted, but it was just a bit of delayed gratification. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I, th- I think I think yeah, we weren't short. It was delayed. We always had what we needed. By the way, we're not slating yeah. parents here. They worked very oh, hard. No. It was what we no, needed. No, and all that stuff but uh yeah like all the luxuries because that's what i'm a class of like you know your game consoles and all the, like yeah. the latest football boots i remember i wanted a pair of football boots i think i've spoke about this before r9s right yeah 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 yeah, yeah. It, and I, I had to get them myself in a way i was glad because once i made the money like through little jobs here and there cutting neighbors grass and so on and so forth and anyway i made some money and i was like when i went to pay for those fuckers i was like 120 pounds i was like i know how long it took me to make 120 pounds what the yeah. fuck am i going to spend 120 quid on these boots for but i was like nah suck it up bro spend yeah, you know, it. I, I could remember you, you buying them. It's going to make you a better player. It didn't. It made fuck all. But anyway, that's what I believe is a 14, 16, <laughs> however old I was. I think I remember you getting them, to be honest, the R9s. No, it must have been must have been earlier yeah, than that. Well, it must have been earlier than that. 
yeah, I've definitely spoken about. I remember telling you the colours, zinc and orange. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to say no. It was definitely earlier than fourteen, fifteen. Right? Re- yeah, no, it was definitely earlier than that. I think. Uh, well, I don't know actually. What was it? Well, well, yeah. Oh yeah, no, you're right. No, so yeah, no, you're, you're right. You're right. No, it must have been around 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 that time. Yeah, for sure. I think I was like sure, first yeah. year of college. First year of college. So yeah. Or oh, Henri was still playing for Arsenal because he had the white and yellow ones. Yes, yes, he did. Yeah, those were yeah, those were really nice. To be fair, those were really really nice. But yeah, like like you said, you know, we never we never you know, it's never about slating parents or anything like that. It's just you know, it depends. It depends what's for, for us. We were different, sort of like you know, we were the same with each other, but we were different to to the rest. Like oh no, we must have it now. No, we would never like nah, that. We nah, kind nah, of understood, nah, nah. obviously the 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 hardships and the struggles at the time. Um, so yeah, we just made our peace with it. But look, it, there was no better feeling than seeing that PS2 for the first time. You know, upgrading from a PS1 or upgrading to a PS3. Yeah, from yeah, PS2. Yeah, Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. I still remember those days. And for me, it's never like, oh, I wish I got it in 2006. Nah, nah, nah that. exactly. I still played with it for many it, years. Yeah. I've still got it, and I've still got that PS3, that exact same one. Uh, oh, it's the got first the PS3. one. Yeah, yeah, it's the original one, the backward compatibility, because obviously they changed, yes, they they changed models. Yes, yes, yes. So I've got, I've still got that, and I will never ever ever trade that in for anything like my mom's yeah, like oh we've got cousins in albania then why don't we send them it i was like mommy if you send them it i will send you along with it <laughs> do you know what i'm saying <laughs> and i will bring that ps3 back and i am bringing you back I'll tell you. <laughs> so no for sure like yeah i've still got it man of course because it's not even it's it's the backward compatibility for one but it's the fact that i'll, I'll always remember that moment that day because it came home my dad came home with the box he pulled out the ps3 he's like this is the one you want yeah cool and then i saw fifa 10 in there as well wayne rooney on the cover i saw fifa 10 and I was like, mate, nah, yes. I can't wait for Christmas yes. now. You know classic, what I'm classic. So, so, do you know what I mean? And you're never going to get those days back. And sometimes that delayed gratification, it, it worked for the better because you appreciated it more. It's like you cherished yeah, it more. Like, I can't believe I it took me this long to get it, and I have it now. I, it's mine. I agree. I agree. I'm just, I'm just super soft when it comes to the little ones for some no, reason. That's, just that's daddy's that's yes and mummy's no. Like that, sure yeah, I'm like, yeah, okay. That's why she loves going like any time we go out, I'm like, yeah, come with daddy. And then she's like, yeah, I'll come with you. We went to buy a present for her friend for the party today. And she went. She got a present as well. What about this one, daddy? And I was like, yeah, that's a really good one. She goes, and I was like, for your friend? She was like, no, this one's for me. (laughs) I was like, not for you. We're looking for your friend. No, for me, daddy. And then she went, for the journey home, how about we buy some snacks? Nice. Yeah, how about nice. buy some snacks? Nice. And I'm like, it's very oh, determined and you know straight to the point, and I like that. Yeah, that's straight it. to like, the point. You gotta you gotta appreciate that. And I'm like, no. And then she's like, I would really like some rice cakes, some snacker jacks <laughs> rice cakes. So this is not an ad, by the way. That's what she like. I'm like, all right, Dad will buy some snacker jacks ice cakes. <laughs> <laughs> this is a full Kevin Hart, that Cat Williams bit where he goes, Daddy will buy you the Jordans all day or in the day, but if you were quicker in the in the Thomas or whatever the hell he says. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, to be fair, it's really good. She's not really into kind of branded trainers or design. I feel like that's more for parents to put their child, their toddler, four-year-old, five-year-old, and they're like, oh, the latest Jordans or the Nikes. Like, bro, she's they into the Elsas. And, yeah. Oh, they grow out of them like that. We spent, when we went to Albania on holiday, my wife's like, let's get her a nice pair of trainers. So I bought her two because I found two pairs that I like. So I was like, fuck it, let's buy two. I got a pair of 95s. This is not me bragging, by the way. This isn't a balling situation. It's just like the little one I'm going to buy. Her. So I bought her those and I bought her the other ones. And I was like, look, she's got these here, but they're simply for holiday because by the time we come back, she's probably grown out of them. And uh, yeah. by October, they no longer fit her. Yeah. And that's like yeah. well, three figures, obviously, that yeah. have been spent yeah, yeah, on two yeah. pairs of trainers. And you think to yourself... Oh, you know, now we love the Elsas. We love the what's what's I don't know what are these shows that she watches. Obviously, a lot of Disney stuff, and I think it's PJ Masks or something like that. Like she loves shoes like that. You would all know, but the listeners will. And I'm like all day, every day, every month, I will buy you a new pair of Elsas for like fifteen pounds or twenty pounds. You know what I mean? Instead of like <laughs> until <laughs> until you're at that age where you're not growing anymore, then you can buy it yourself. <laughs> Don't you find it? I know we've got no, on football listeners going, what the fuck are these two talking about? We're talking, we're, we're trying to see what the weekend preview is. But listen, yeah, don't you possible. find it? It's quite sad when you're that young. You don't really care about design or branded clothes. I use the word design, not because design has changed now. Now it's to like Montclair and all these other like four figure items. Than, and fucking, yeah, all this bullshit. The Yeezys and shit. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but right? But Awful. when we were younger, it was all about the Adidas and the Nike, wasn't it? Really? Yeah, if it came to shoes, was Adidas, Nike, shit. Yeah. there's always branded stuff. Yeah. And I'm always like, at what point did, does that transition happen where no longer you don't like the Elsas or the Pokemons or the Power Rangers shoes, you go straight for school, nah, right? I like that Nike. Yeah. School, Is it like right? 
secondary though, right? It can't be primary, surely not. I don't remember in primary school being like, oh my God, you've got Adidas four stripes, whatever those. Bro, for us at school, it was it was PS1, PS2 and Xbox. Well, but no, Xbox wasn't even out then. That's what it was back then. Do you know what I mean? It wasn't even about like PCs or anything. You know, like people now are like, oh, I'm having a Mac or I've got, a, I've got an iMac at home and I've got this and I've got an alien computer. It's like, no, we didn't care about any of that. For us, it was, yeah. you know, like you said, football boots. Because that's yeah. that's what we will that's what we liked a football top, you know. Oh my god, I've yeah. got the brand new Arsenal top. Or I've got the brand new Chelsea top. Look at that. I've got the name on the back. Yeah, oh my god. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? But now, obviously, we're like, what the? F- I, don't, I don't. Why would I want some other geezer's name on the back of my shirt? <laughs> I'm yeah, walking around like Gallagher. Like who? That's not even my name. I'm not even English. What the fuck is this? <laughs> well, I think I think I think it happens. I think it happens in that in that school transition. Yeah, you're right. Secondary school is probably probably more because. You know, that's when kids can, you know, think more more for themselves and they and they see others and others are bragging because that's that's how they brought up from their parents, you know, like, oh, you know, I got you these pair, pair of Balenciagas, so you better look after these because these are very expensive. Guess what? That kid's going to go to school the next day and be like, oh, these are very expensive Balenciagas. Yeah. And then your kid's yeah, going to come yeah, home and yeah, say, yeah, yeah. oh, my friend had these uh, Balenciagas, very expensive. And I want some. Like, wait, what? <laughs> shit, I never had yeah. Balenciagas. What the fuck is this? How, yeah, no, to be fair, it's only recently I learned you how to You have Diadoras and shit and Elise. Yeah. <laughs> and Fila. And Fila. But the, you know what? The, the funny thing is, right, those things are like 100, 100 plus pounds now. The I feelers know, and the Diodorus, you know what I'm saying? The way back and now, it's look, like that Kappa. Be coming back. Kappa, Kappa, right? Do you remember, do you remember when we were kids? Kappa were like the cheapest shit that you could get because they were just cheap. And we didn't care for them. Like, we, we wore Kappas, but obviously for us then it was like, oh, I'd rather have a Nike or whatever. But now mm. Kappas, this is 70 pound, 70 pound worth fucking, not these, because these were from vintage, so not these specific ones. <laughs> I don't know what you're pointing at, by the way. I just, you're just saying not these. All right, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The Kappas. Now. Um, so yeah, no, like something like this, like from from an actual shop, you, you're talking seventy oh, yeah. plus pounds. Like, it's that retro fashion now, isn't yeah, it? Everybody's trying fuck? to go back to those times, and it's on. So now I agree with you. Like, is this Diodorus? I was looking for a pair of boots, and I want to go and play five aside. I was like, oh, let me see if I can find some cheap pair of Diodorus. Or you can't. Uh, what's another? Uh, there's another one. There was another one like Umbro. There was some Sondi- or... Yeah, Umbro. Umbro, and so and I'm like, they were like ninety quid. I was like, what the fuck, ninety quid? I'm not but spending Umbros and, and Pumas, by the way. And fucking Pumas, yeah, what? If you would become such an expert, anyway, never. Now, now, literally, my the pair of boots, the football boots that I have, like the AstroTurf stuff, they, they're Sondicos because those were the cheapest, twenty five quid, twenty five quid, and it's like even then, I'm like, do I really want to spend twenty five quid on boots that I wear like what, maybe once a year? But you know, fuck it, I've, I've got them now. I wear them whenever, obviously, football happens or used to happen. Yeah, oh yeah, but whenever yeah. it comes back around, if it does. Yeah, exactly. Like, but no, fuck, Jesus Christ, man, you're right though. For us, it was always Nike and Adidas. There was nothing else above those. Nah, nothing, nothing else. else. Reeboks were cheaper. Yeah, Pumas yeah, yeah. were cheap. Uh, at least all that shit. Diadoras were, were cheap. What was the other one? There was another one. Um, began with a D as well. Yeah. Sh- the, sorry, the Slazen- the Slazengers and shit. Slazengers, like yeah, 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 Slazengers. Yeah. I remember Le Coq Sportif or Le Co- the Cockerel. Le Coq Sportif, yeah, Le, Le Coq Sportif. Sportif. Yeah, it's like, yeah, what the fuck? The shits are expensive now. And what's the other one? The Japanese expensive. running one. As- 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 oh, what the hell? Asics. 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 Yeah, yeah, Asics. I remember like there was a pair of boots. The Asics. cheapest that you could get. Yeah, the cheap, the, the running, the running shoes. Yeah, yeah, the running shoes, but the running shoes, yeah. And the New Balance as right. well. New Balance came out like all, all of a sudden because some uh, uh, some athletes were wearing them or were sponsored by them. New Balance became all this expensive shit, and I'm like, what the fuck is going on? What yeah, is going yeah, yeah. on? Converse. They were thirty five pounds when I first bought my my first pair of Converse. Thirty five pounds, seventy eight quid. <laughs> 78 pounds I'm like nah I can't for, for what cloth and rubber like literally let's just be honest it's cloth and rubber you don't yeah, wear yeah, converse yeah. for any for any other thing apart from like just looking good that's it you don't run with them you don't play basketball in converse anymore none of that shit but yeah I think I think school has a major has a major influence on kids I mean you just remember from yourself as well I just quickly just googled the, which Go on. one I was talking about it was the me Mizuno the, the football Mizunos, boots, Mizuno yeah, football Mizuno, boots. Yeah, they're yeah, the yeah. ones that I was. Uh, that's the ones I was trying to say to you instead of Asics. Sorry, I meant the Mizuno because I think that was a Japanese one as well. Because the Asics, because uh, the, the Asics, um, I think, I think they're predominantly running. Yeah, but back then they they were cheap. But now oh, Asics yeah, yeah. are like, now oh my like god, crazy. running and jogging and oh, all this and that. It's like no, 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 no. Just give me the Nike and Adidas, and I'll be happy with that. Thank you very much. Do you that's know what I mean? That's literally all wow. I've got. I've, 
I've got pairs of Adidas. I don't think I've, I own a pair of Nikes. Like I haven't owned a pair of Nikes in a long time. Now, see, I, for some reason, I've still ended up staying on those. I've, I've changed, by the way, my footwear. While we're talking on footwear, I, I used to be a lot of Adidas, and then I've just felt like my foot sits better on a pair of Nike shoes. I feel like mm. they support my arch better. The best pair of trainers that I had were a pair of running shoes called the Nike Free Run 5. I had them at the university. I don't know if you remember. They used to be like a sort of like, I think they're kind of this color. Like a I mesh. To describe this color. Like a, oh, how the hell are you going to see this? You can't see it. It's disappeared, man. Uh, oh, yeah, shit. It disappeared. Fuck it. That color. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that, that colour that just disappeared in the background. Yeah, that yeah, was yeah, yeah. yellow, but I can't find them anywhere else. And then I found another pair that they did, and I bought them. But just my foot sits better on them. Like my toes seem to be freely rather than squashed mm. like sardines, and uh, supports my arch because I've got a little bit not a flat foot, but I'm kind of on the way there, or oh, ish. Thanks. Yeah, so try to have the, that support. And I think it's just because of the brand as well. I don't know what it is psychologically, I guess. But yeah, I've never deviated now since i've swapped to nike Nikes, trainers. yeah as university i'm always nikes Do you know, all the way. 95s as well by the way love it nike 95s, 95s. Nice, yes. love 95s and i love the nike nike what's it called the nike ones or nike yeah and ones something like that i think they're called oh, the air, force air force ones, ones. air max ones not air force oh, air max ones they're yeah, quite, yeah okay. they're like okay. a brick on your foot they're air force ones yeah 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 they are oh, they've got so no good. they've got no air flexibility air that's it. It's just like clonk, clonk, yeah. clonk. I'm like, now, nah, like you, you, it's like you buy the, you buy them Nike Air Force Ones to sit down, and yeah. that is crazy, <laughs> right? How crazy is that? You buying shoes to sit down. Now, um, my favorites to this day that I've ever had were a pair of leather-topped um, sambas. Oh, Adidas Sambas, Sambas. leather tops, and I've got, I've got yeah, a pair yeah, downstairs, yeah, yeah. but I've got the uh, suede finish on top, the, the classics. But the leather ones that I used to have, those were my favorite ever shoes that I ever owned, like trainers ever owned. Yeah. I got put off those trainers simply because I was playing with them. And I don't know if this has happened to any of the listeners. Is when we were playing foot, where every time I made a contact with the ball, like not obviously not full on laces, but just where your big toe is, that mm-hmm. kind of like sort of two o'clock. If yeah, 12 yeah, o'clock yeah. is full on and nine o'clock or whatever, three yeah, yeah, o'clock I know is one side, you know, you know what, what I mean? mean? And then that's from then it just started. To, I don't know whether it was just in consistently because I was that good, consistent contact stop, all the time. Stop, stop. That's uh, how you got your yeah, they, ripped, they literally ripped. They ripped there. And oh, mine like, ripped. Mine ripped joking? as well, yeah. Like, mine ripped from I like for these shoes? crossing, I think, crossing mine. Yeah, because obviously predominantly right, right footed, yeah. It, it's the crossing that did it for me. But again, I, I don't play footy in those shoes anymore because I've learned my lesson. Like, if, yeah, yeah, even yeah. if I bought another pair of leather top sambas, I would never ever kick a ball in them because it's like, nah, why would I do that? You know, these are comfortable to walk in. Why the fuck would I do that shit? Yeah, but no. uh, but not sh- shoes. I've got, oh my God, I've got like, again, not not like bragging or anything, but I've got such a big collection of shoes, but they're, they're mixed match. They're not like, oh, I've only got Ad- uh, Adidas or I've only got Nikes. No, I've got a collection of Converse, which I really do like. I like my, my collection of Converse. Yeah. And, I'm, and I want Chuck to Chuck Taylors more. for the people over the pod. Oh, my Chuck Taylors, yeah. Got my, Chuck I love my Chuck Taylors. Taylors. Over the pod. I love my Chuck Taylors. I really do. Uh, my sister got me these uh, weatherproof ones. Oh, nice. So, basically, so, like, obviously, if it rains, you don't feel shit. Um, and they're, like, sort of reversible in a way where it's, like, if it's cold outside, your foot stays warm. And if it's warm outside, right. yeah, it's yeah, cool. yeah. Got that technology, yeah, 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 yeah. So Which is like, like if it's I, warm, it's cool, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I didn't yeah. even know that was a thing until she got them. I was like, oh my god, these are awesome, all black, and I fucking love them. Yeah, love, love them. them. But uh, and one of my uh, ex uh, <coughs> girlfriend, she got me a pair ex-friend. of uh, ex friends. Yeah, she got me a pair of uh, Batman Converse, like proper original Batman nice. Converse. Oh, they are. Again, I've only worn them once because let's face it, I look ridiculous wearing, you know, walking around with <laughs> a comic book on my foot. Yes, that's what it is. We're just walking around with a comic book. All this misses is just the music. Na 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 na. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Converse. Yeah, trying to work and people are just re- looking at your feet, trying to read. what's yeah, happening. trying to read what's going They'll on. Yeah. Excuse me. Can you change over? Because I need to know what's happening on the next yes. scene. So can you on just hop over? <laughs> on my way back home. Yes. If you're still here, you get to read the rest. But I've got those and the laces. They've got like little the the yellow Batman logo all across them, which are amazing. Which again, why would I wear those? Sh- why would I wear those Converse? Like you know, th- those are literally collectibles. Yeah. But. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I love if I yeah, collectible wise, shoes wise, it's the converse for me, which I just fell in love. I found these other, anyway. Look, let's not talk. Let's go. Let's no, let's no, talk no, about yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm still just like and now with all don't you feel like as you get older you feel like you're wearing more boots, like high toppy things for your foot to be more comfortable yeah. rather than style. Because like you think fucks yeah, Tim's as well, bro. Like I was wearing mine yesterday and I had another pair that I've kind of exhausted. When I mean exhausted, bro, like I've put them together with gorilla glue, I've tried everything to <laughs> people at work are like 
what are you doing? Like, why, why are you still wearing them? And I'm like, because they're my work shoes. Like, it's fine. Like, if they get knackered, they get knackered. I don't really care. Whereas the other pair that my wife bought me, like, I think she bought them from uh, two years ago. Like, they're in a box. I wear them. I take them out. I put them back in the box. I put the the, the insole inside as well to keep the creases yeah, out. Yeah, and yeah, keep yeah, yeah, perfect. yeah. And I wore them yesterday, and she was like, it was muddy, of course. She was like, oh, are you sure you want to wear them today? Have yeah, you that's, seen that's taking the piss. Like, that's taking the piss. Like, it's like, come on. Yeah, like, that's this is what you bought at the point. Like, this is the time. <laughs> but I choose when I wear them. In the sun, with flipping <laughs> shorts. <laughs> You're looking like a rap video out here, do you know what I mean? In LA, eating a bowl of cereal or some shit. Yeah, that's it. Cycling shorts and an umbrella. (laughs) Brilliant, brilliant. Yeah, you go swimming in those bad boys. But you know, I I love, I love the Timberlands as well. To be honest, like, yeah, I've got crazy expensive, all right. Let's let's be fair. Yeah, crazy expensive. Unless they want to sponsor us, then yeah, man, I'm all for it. They are like last thing I'll say on shoes. um, Maybe last year or the year before, we went to. Maybe shoe or footlock or one of the two. I can't remember which one it was, right? But we walked in there and sat on one of the shelves with like uh, Timberlands, but they were sort of uh, a bit like high top, but they were more like trainers rather than boots. Right. And I swear to you, I fell in love with them. Fell in love with them, right? And that Christmas, my mum, she got me, my mum and sister, they got me a pair of Timberlands. Not each, by the way, combined. Let's just, you know, let's not go crazy. <laughs> because they're that expensive. You literally yeah, need three people to chip in. You need to get a, you need to get a GoFundMe page. Yeah, exactly. That's what they did. But, um, so she, but then obviously they got me the, the proper boots, the high top boots, Mm-hmm. When I was like, yeah, these are lovely. Don't get me wrong. These are comfortable as shit. And I could literally, you could walk up a mountain in those, no problem. But in, my, in the back of my mind, I was like, damn, I really wanted those, those Timberland trainers. You know what I mean? And, yeah, I, cannot, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I, I don't even know where to find them anymore. But they were like uh, 85 quid or something like that. Which for Timberlands, it's not too bad. It's not too bad to be it's fair. It's not no, too bad, but it still like, hurts. They're pushing it, it like hurts. around 80, 120, 100 and something. You know, yeah. it's like you think to yourself, 180, 220 yeah, for the, the boots. boots. You know, the, the boots, boots, boots 175 like, quid at the very yeah. least. Like, what the fuck? What the fuck? But anyway, like, you know, Timberlands love them shits. But we're not, you know, we're, we're simple guys. You know? Yeah, that's it. simple. Yeah, we're talking yeah. about three figures in a pair of shoes and we're like, eh, yeah, simple. <laughs> Listen, simple we are simple, but the things that we like, obviously, you know, we work hard, bro. Sometimes you need to treat yeah. yourself you as want, well. You, want you need to know nice, yeah. what you're working for as well. Sometimes it's not all about like, oh my God, I need to save, I need to save. Of course, save for a rainy day. That's not what we're saying, but treat yourself as well because you know how hard you work. What's nothing wrong with a little treat from you to you? Yeah. yeah. So, I'm so glad I found Vinted, by the way. Honestly, Vinted is one of the best. And Vinted, if they want to sponsor us. By the way. I've never used it. Are you what kidding me? Are you kidding me? You've never used Vinted? Bro, trust me. Don't Vinted. don't go on Vinted right now. because No, don't do it. Because you will oh, literally like not even pay attention to what I'm saying to you. Believe me, go on Vinted. Um, ask your wife. She'll probably know what Vinted is. Will I be able to meet Martin Odegaard if I go on Vinted like you did? <laughs> no, that was that was marketplace. That was marketplace. Oh, that marketplace. That was I don't marketplace. even want to be on here. Let me close this tab down. I don't even want this tab. Trust me, trust me. Vinted, right? Like it's you will get addicted, and I got addicted to it. Like I said, this not because top that I'm wearing right now that you can see the striped. Yeah, That's yeah, where I got yeah. it from. I got it from Vinted. Like and these couple, these twelve quid from Vinted, brand new. But someone, someone was like, they don't fit me, so I'm going to sell them brand new with tags. Like, what the fuck? Of course I'm going to pay Vinted. for them. Vinted, let me have a look at this. No, 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 right no, no, let's not do this. Let's not do this. Let's talk some football. Let's talk some football. Let's talk some football. No, actually, we do need to talk some football because my, my boys won again. Ah, I mean, come on. Ah. <laughs> come on, ah. bro. Like, you know, just say that tongue-in-cheek, really. You won again. <laughs> you won again? No, you did. You won again. We won three. Well, I don't even know. Where are we even in the league, by the way? Because Man United drew today. I know Newcastle lost. As part of me, I was like kind of bittersweet. I wanted them to win, but then I, I remembered them to win why well. I don't want them to win. Of course, of course, for you, but for Not me, personally. obviously, the other, the opposite. Yeah, the opposite. Yeah. We'll come to we'll come to the city Newcastle game because that was, in a way, boring but exciting at the same time, or it got a bit exciting uh, by the end. But um, you know, I was I was actually listening to some of the predictions that we made. Uh, on the previous pod, yeah, I've got. My me. God, yeah, we, yeah. Were, we were way off. So let's just let's just rattle through some of uh, through some of the games, right? Yeah. We'll start off with Fridays. We we'll start with Burnley Luton. Um, I can't remember what my prediction was. You went two one. I went one two and finished one one. It finished one one. So we were like we balanced each other out. Um, I watched bits of that match. Um, not really exciting. I thought it was going to be a lot more like you know a, a lot more end to end because you know they were fighting pretty much for the six points at the bottom of the table. But no, it just really wasn't. It, it when Luton scored, I was I was quite excited. I was like, yeah, get in. But no, it just that's all it ended. It ended on one one. So, but uh, and they scored ninety second minute as well. Yeah, well, it, this is what I wanted to ask you about because they're talking about the penalty uh, free should have been a free kick on the keeper and that was never given. Did you get to see that? Because I haven't seen anything on that. 
Um, I they did. were saying another controversial decision that should have been given or wasn't given. And, I think. Yeah, that- I think so as well. I think so as well because it, it, when you look at it, it looks like he backed into the keeper, like he mm-hmm. did it on purpose. He backed into the keeper, but yeah, I think I think that probably should have been a foul on 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 the keeper. But you know, it's it's VAR. Like, what do you? I'm not surprised anymore. It's just you have to make your peace with it and you move on, really. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, I, I genuinely thought that should have been that should have been a foul. But you know, it's it's, it's- it has been some awful decisions which we will get into each game especially one of the weekend for my team because if it was the other way around I'd have been fucking fuming by the way I don't know if you did you watch any other Chelsea match no I was actually out no. shopping with the, with the wife um, oh, okay. so I didn't get to see any of the match but obviously I, the result I, I was I was you know checking flash scores like yeah okay cool just checking it and oh Chelsea winning our bastards but, uh, but yeah, so it wasn't what, great though it wasn't great but it we'll talk about it, it later what but I've, yeah yeah from, for from the, the game of that, that one, saw, you went yeah. 1-1. It was, it was a draw. It was. It should have been a draw, really. I'm happy that we took the one nail. Another clean yeah. sheet, if it does anything for the, for that back four. But yeah, it's um, really. it's... and then Newcastle. No, I'm, on, sorry. I'm sorry, sorry. We'll just stick. We'll just stick on Chelsea. Um, I think it was. Uh, I think for, for Petrovic, I, I like that keeper. I don't know what it is about him. I really do like him. And uh, I'm glad that he got he another clean really sheet. He hasn't really put a foot wrong, has he? He hasn't. He hasn't. And uh, again, when when goals go in against Chelsea, or when you can see goals, you can't really blame the keeper too much because there's been a lot of defensive errors, as we pointed out last game. Yeah. Colwell, yeah. De Sassi. Uh, when you've got two defenders like who who are not doing their job properly, then you can't really blame the other, the keeper or Thiago Silva. Do you know what I'm saying? Because like, he's no, doing agree. everything, and and the keeper's, you know, he's like you said, he hasn't put a foot wrong, and I'm glad that he got uh, he got what he deserved. Which is a clean sheet, um, but obviously Palmer is—he's uh, <laughs> getting a lot of penalties. Let's just be honest; he's getting a lot of penalties. But obviously, I know you don't care because shit is scoring. It's not so much he's getting them; the other boys are getting the penalties. He just seems so to want to scoring. Them. Yeah, he's yeah, scoring. He's scoring a lot of penalties. Uh, a lot of penalties. While we're on that, to be fair, starting eleven, I was a bit like meh. Yes, I saw, I saw. I saw your message. We discussed on that message. we discussed uh, on the previous pod. I was like, really, these three boys can't play together. But tactically, they kind of said to Conor Gallagher, "You do the running. Caicedo will sit back and just do nothing. Just sit back because yeah. not really won many balls for us. And then Enzo was a little bit more active, a bit more lively, a little bit more like what Enzo that we saw last year, where people were like, oh, he's, there's a good player in there. We can yeah. see the, we can see flashes of it. Uh, but again, the main thing of any good player, you need people to run. You need options. You know, there's no need to have the ball in the middle of the park and stick your hands to the side as in like, where is everyone? We've seen Declan Rice do this for you guys. I saw Cole Palmer do it, Enzo doing it. Whereas yesterday, we were getting numbers in the box, unlike the Middlesbrough game. Although we struggled to break them down, we were just like one or two people in the box or nobody yeah. in the box. Or nobody in the box, yeah. One might have wake us cross. And then... Uh, yeah, yesterday, four or five people make running into the box. Nothing wrong with that. And I was like, okay, sweet. Chilwell is making a comeback as well. Hopefully he stays fit till the end of the season and he can finish the remainder of the season. So, yeah, that's a big plus for us because Cole Will, as good as he is, as good as he is, as, as good as he was a couple of games in September, October yeah. time, yeah. Uh, he hasn't really given offered much going forward. Unlike Chilwell, Chilwell kind of can do both of those fullback roles. Yeah. Defense. Then he gets injured. So, you know, you're going to have to take the good with the bad. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So let's hope not he doesn't get injured anymore but I think uh, I think with that sorry Rick with that starting 11 as we discussed on the last pod as well you know you, you're screaming out for a focal point which in this case Breuer and because look it's not even it's not even the fact that you know he's a great player or whatever he's just your only player that can play in that position who yeah. who has some sort of you know not creativity but has a bit of power and he's he can finish the ball like once once he gets into that position you can finish it like unlike Nicholas Jackson which he can make the run but he can't he doesn't have the end product so again yeah. I, I don't want to say I don't, I'm not saying this to say like oh Breyer he you know he's the chosen one or whatever no but he is the only one that could do that job right now currently in that Chelsea squad you know what I mean and Uncuku when <clears throat> which I didn't know by the way he got injured again um, yeah injured again I, did, a couple of weeks I didn't now. know that but uh, but yeah, even on Cuckoo, like he's not out. He's not a striker, like an out and out no, no, striker. No. He, he really isn't. Ought to be a striker, neither. No. By the way. And that's what I'm saying. So like for for the for the options that you have, Breuer is definitely the only one who could who could play that. And look, when you've got runners like a Palmer or a Sterling, like you know Sterling can can make a run down the wing. He can cross a ball. He can he can find a pass. Palmer, obviously, as we discussed, you know Palmer sort of drops into that free roaming. Uh, 
number 10 role, which you can find a pass and then you can make them late runs. So again, when you've got people like that, you, it's easy to start shifting the squad around, you know, the, the yeah, team around yeah. the starting 11. It's, it's easy to see like, oh, okay, well, like I said, you sit back because we don't need you up front. So you just shore up our defense. And we've got Enzo and Gallagher, who obviously one's the runner, the other one's more of a creative player in finding the passes in Enzo. So it's, you know, as a starting 11, I think it's probably not far off your best w- with what you have right now, you know, barring the injuries that you Yeah, uh, I agree. I agree with what you say. It's just the thing is that they're not the three in the middle, as we mentioned earlier, they're not very consistent. Like obviously no. looking at it and the way what looked set up yesterday was like a 4-2-3-1 with Gallagher playing as a 10. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so if Unkuku comes in, Unkuku would get the 10. If Enzo and Caicedo are firing in all cylinders as, and they're filling their full potential of 100-something million each, ah. then uh, these two start over, Kays- over Conor Gallagher, right? Yes. Or you would assume yeah. these two start. Uh, another good thing yesterday was Kearney. Kearney Chukameka coming back. So he's obviously going to come back. And he was very good until he got injured against West Ham. I don't know if you remember. Beginning, if he, I was taught, I was praising him a lot. So he's got that kind of yeah, feeling yeah, that I yeah. enjoyed running with the ball, running forward. When I was saying to you, uh, the Spurs boy. Trying to break down break, lines and shit, yeah. Breaking lines, taking on at least that first initial guy comes to you for a press go past him and then go with, and then looks to kind of move the ball forward rather than sideways. So, but we still need a striker. The formation 4 2 3 is probably our best one. Uh, Palmer has to play because stats alone show that he must play. But he just gets, I think he gets scared quite easy. If somebody goes in with a tough challenge or one or three players don't give him the space he needs yeah. or the space he must have and the runners, then he just shuts down. It kind of, his head goes down, and which is what we saw in Middlesbrough. By the way, he's allowed to have those games as yes. long as it's a yeah, one off. As long agree. as it's not kind of a, let's do this every. One good game and an sh- awful game. One good game and an awful game. That's not the, the Cole Palmer that we want. But statistically, he starts every game because he's scored. And he has to. Goal like involvement. Said, yeah, I, I agree. I totally agree with you. And again, he is, well, he has been your best player this season. Yeah. In that, yeah. In the, especially in that, in, that, in that front three or front four or whatever you want to class it as, in that forward uh, role. He he has been the best, and um, you can't drop him for anything really, unless obviously if you feeling if he's feeling a bit fatigued, then yeah, fair enough, you give him a rest. Mm. But then you'll struggle. Then you'll struggle because who are you going to put in there? You're going to put Madweke in there. Like what the fuck? Who are you going to put Madweke in there for? No, like, Madweke, I was even surprised he started. He, he came on as a sub. Really, I would like to have seen uh, Modric come on, especially when Fulham were looking for an equalizer, like leaving yeah. a lot of space behind. Modric I was really yeah. disappointed he's that, guy. that decision that he made because you can trust Modric on his speed. If you don't trust anything, yeah. just trust his speed that he will get there before any other defender or any other player because he is that quick and uh, I think I thought it would have been a good way for him to have a little run out maybe play with a formation or a little some tactical changes to see what they're going to do against Middlesbrough but he went with Madueka again I don't know why I, I really don't rate Noni Madueka at no. all I think he's no. so left foot he can finish don't get me wrong and he can get a strike off but he needs a lot of time and a lot of space which is in the Premier League you don't get time and space no, absolutely not absolutely not and uh, we've seen that with other with other uh, with other players as well who obviously trying to get a little bit more time and um it's it's fast paced it really is fast paced really and, and and the premier league can ruin good players you know from other leagues it's like oh yeah this guy and like Werner for example i saw Werner it's like mm. you know he's still making shots and it's like dude where are you sending are you sending that back to leipzig <laughs> what are you doing man yeah i saw the stats for him today when it was five shots zero on target I like, it, it, I, look we'll definitely come to that match as well yeah. uh, we'll I'll briefly touch on it because i don't really care for either team to be honest but i actually sat down and watched that game because i thought it was going to be a lot more exciting than it ended up being um but but yeah like you know with going back to chelsea in terms of in terms of what you, what he put out it's probably the best what you, uh, with what you've got um obviously chill well you can't really put him in you know for, in the start in the starting 11 because he still hasn't he still no, hasn't got, exactly. got up to speed yeah but I'm, i was surprised as well when because i saw your message as well like you know oh he doesn't trust mudrick and for a second i thought like oh okay mudrick's on and he doesn't, you know, he clearly, it's clear why Pochettino doesn't trust him. But then now I'm looking, I'm like, shit, didn't even make it on the team. Didn't like, even what make the, it on me, yeah. Didn't make it on, what the hell is going on? Obviously, you're, you're the toughest critic for Modric. And even the, last week or week before, last episode or the episode before that, you were saying, like, he's doing some good stuff. He's making some decent runs. You know, you're singing, yeah. not singing his praise. Oh, my God, he's worth the 80 million, no, et cetera. Definitely. But you were saying he's doing some good stuff or he looks to be turning his game around. And he's, But for some reason, we seem to have players who make that turn, gain a little 
bit of confidence and then Poch is like no nah, not anymore mate sit down and you're yeah. like what are you doing we are crying out for players to have confidence we need to the spine that, yeah. to have yeah. in all these wingers literally everybody on that team if you want to top four and challenge for the titles not this season but coming season you need to be flying high on confidence and currently we lack a lot of it we lack a lot of things uh, forcing it even yesterday we went one nil up and I was like right attack now let's have what's the game plan if we go up ahead and it was the same game plan let's slowly pass it around first of all let's yeah. get some players better than Middlesbrough of course because against Middlesbrough we were awful but it still wasn't to the Chelsea that I expected or the Chelsea that I'm used to seeing you know the intensity the pace that killer yeah. instinct is very much kind of oh we're one nil let's see if we can kind of save this result and you're like bro like you scored in the first half there's another 45 minutes to go yeah. and by the I'm last surprised. 10 yeah. we were we were soaking up pressure we were soaking up pressure and I, like I said, I, I was surprised that it ended up one nil, considering the goal came what like just before half time. The penalty came just before half time. I was very surprised, and I was thinking, you know, this is probably going to end up as a draw. You know, I think that was the prediction, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, draw. you predicted one one, yeah. So, but I, look, you know, at the end of the day, you fair enough. Like, you know, you, you score score a goal, you didn't maybe didn't attack as much, but you know, you soaked up the pressure. But you got to take, like I said, you got to take the the good with the bad. And in this case, yes, you didn't obviously, you know, get a second goal or whatever, or try and get a second goal. You didn't concede. So you know, you got to. Yeah. It's it's a balancing act, and it seems like it seems like you kind of figured that out or Pochettino's figured that out but again there's still mistakes in, in his team selection because like you said there you know Fulham were leaving a lot of space behind and they were, you know, by the time really by were. the time they were doing that Sterling would have been tired Palmer would have been tired obviously Madweka came on but pff, shit the fuck you might as well put me or you on and you know we could probably do a better we could have a better ch- uh, yeah. chance and Madweka is something Madrid was do you remember what I used to say Madrid is so predictable Madweka is predictable yeah. Every, everything is on that left foot and it's not like Palmer Palmer seems to get everything on his left foot but that he does the thing effortlessly sometimes it's just like yeah. defenders think yeah. he's going right and he ends up going left as if he makes defenders forget that he's left footed yeah. Madi Waker yeah. just tells you like telepathically and it shows you by the way I'm going to pass to like him three miles away like yeah, by the time like, he crosses the halfway line it's like bro shit man can you just at least attempt you know, to do like a little exactly do like something like me or some. I mean, no, never racking, but... never racking the end of it. But another thing to chat about, as I mentioned at the beginning, was uh, the challenge. I don't know if you saw the highlights or I've seen the challenge. No, no, I That uh, Gusto did. Ah, oh, dirty, dirty, dirty challenge. Dirty like challenge. Gusto, was it? He should have. He should have seen a red. I'll be honest with you. He should have seen red because. Uh, but bad. luckily, the referee for us, lucky for Chelsea, didn't get sent to the monitor. Gave it a yellow and left it with that. He clipped wow. the ball. Don't get me wrong. He touched the ball a little bit, but he but just followed it right on the angle. Like, yeah, follow through. We've had players who've been sent off for that. Looking at yes. an interview, what Pochettino said, he goes, "I didn't argue with the one against Aston Villa because that was a red, but this one was a yellow for me. It wasn't a red." Mm. And I, okay. whereas Marco Silva was like, "What is going on?" Clearly. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure he was. I'm sure he was like fuming to be fair. But at that uh, point, it was by It could have been a different result. Chelsea with ten men. Oh, I agree. Oh, what a save by Petrovic, by the way. I'm just watching one of the... Uh, I'm just watching some of the highlights. My God, what a save that was. Incredible. So, again, he kind of deserved it. He kind of deserved the... Ooh, naughty from Gusta, that. Do you see... Yeah, uh, seen that? Do you see that, Geese? Oh, yeah, that's... that's. Ooh, I can't believe he never even got sent to the monitor because of that. He got the ball. Yeah, ooh. <laughs> William's heel was planted as well. Oh, shit. That, that looked... Actually, look nasty, and I'm very proud of that because we've seen players turn off because of that. You know, what I mean, dangerous tackles and whatnot. But uh, but there you go. Look, at the end of the day, you got the three points that you needed, and um, you know, you're what you sat. You still sat eighth, I think. You sat eighth. <laughs> no, we dropped down to ninth. We were tenth. We moved up to eight. United draw moved us down. That's right. Yeah, the United Fuck, draw wasn't it? Yeah, so that, that really in screwed, there. Well, yeah, screw Spurs as well. But uh, <laughs> um, so you yeah, look. I, I think I think my prediction on where Chelsea is going to end up. I think that's going to come true. To be honest, I said somewhere between seventh and ninth, didn't I? Did you I said seven, sure eight, I did. seven yeah. eight, I think you said, and then you saw so that. So, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, hap- I'm happy with that prediction, to be honest with you, because again, you're going to get games like this where you win one nil, but then you're going to get other games where again that one nil is not going to be good enough, and then you'll end up or even drawing like right at the death of, it, and it's just going to be heartbreak. But, yeah. Uh, but yeah, overall, I mean, overall, I, I'm guessing you weren't really that happy with the performance. 
just just look just not all listening to all what you're saying and yeah, how, yeah, and no, how no, you're no, saying no, it yeah. not, obviously i don't have the enthusiasm in my voice i'm not like yeah. oh we did this because like i say to you like I'm, i watch football and yes we win and i'm happy with a goal and get in and we great finish by palmer by the way to kind of like let's just shout out to him the yeah, game that yeah, he had yeah. against middlesbrough the sitters that he missed against middlesbrough to take the pressure on to take the penalty at Stamford Bridge to be like, no, dude, I can do it. Such a young it. lad with Cold. such a kind of like mature head and a lot of balls on him to be like, you know what, I'll take this. And he took it so and put it away. So well done to him for that. But yeah, overall, the performance was a bit weak and the penalty was weak as well. If I'm totally honest, like Raheem, it was like the Bruno Fernandes penalty against Wigan where just the leg was coming and just leave a leg dangle there, but not even enough yeah, to get yeah, contacted. Yeah. It's more like you just get grazed by the leg and then it go a down. Sterling, it was a sterling penalty. Yeah, the Sterling, the sterling penalty, penalty. Was really, really weak. And I'm, I'm, it went for us, and I'm like, yay, let's have that. But being realistically as a football fan and without my Chelsea hat on, I hate seeing those penalties get given because you yeah. can stand up. But then it's a very grey area of like w- how forceful is it must a challenge be in order for it to be a free kick or a penalty? Where do you draw the line? You know, like, oh, that was a graze, but that might not. It goes back to the shot penalty, isn't it? It goes back to the shot penalty where it's like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which it shouldn't have definitely, definitely, hundred percent, million percent. It should never have been a penalty. But you're absolutely right. That's where that's where VAR needs to step in to be like, look, mate, his elbow hair kind of grazed the top of his shin pad. The guy took two more steps and then fell over. That is not a penalty, right? That is not yeah. contact. Okay, that is not contact. Do you know what I mean? But They're what, making it as like if that, like it's yeah. So the alien contacts came steps. down and like ah. <laughs> Yeah, nah, if a player takes two, three steps, it should not be given a penalty. Like you can, like, what are you doing? Even if it looks takes two, three steps, and they're really trying to stand you, we've seen that happen as well. We've mentioned it on the yeah, we're sort where, of like falling. Yeah, yeah they're like going falling over. You can, down, yeah. and that doesn't even get given because they're like, oh, you took a shot. Like, but that was a that should have been a penalty because completely yeah. knocked him off balance. Whereas the Jota one, he took two steps. He's like, what am I doing? I've got I've yeah, captain sure. Salah on FPL. I need to go down. Yeah, I need so to go down. No, you're, you're right. So it, it's kind of like getting punished. Uh, the players are getting punished for being too honest. Yeah, the honest players gets punished and the ones punished there, which is crazy. Free and the acting and the diving. Uh, yeah. Then obviously they're the ones who trick the ref and. Get which I don't want to. I don't want to see from players like Jota because I really like you know we praise him every yeah, single praise, podcast and he's so good. Um, he's a game changer. I, I think he's a game changer. So yeah, I, I definitely don't want to see that. But I'm glad that obviously you know the fairness is coming out and this is what I mean when I say on the group I'm a fair I'm a fair guy like when it comes to. <laughs> judging penalties and even for my team it's like what the fuck was he doing get up book him for that do you know what I mean if yeah, Saka yeah, goes down and it's and it's shit book him for it because again I don't want to see that crap it's a waste of time and again you just basically what what they're doing is you, you just sort of stopping that momentum because you decided to fall down and oh ref ref like nah just stop it stay on your what, feet try what and you're explaining shoot is what gets me mixed at Sunday League not that I get to watch all the matches in the league but I've seen some interviews where players uh, like sorry coaches and parents say they're doing what they see on the TV the whole ref 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 and it's like oh they do the Bruno Fernandes kind of touch the eye when they've touched on the yeah, knee yeah, or yeah, something yeah, yeah. they're like holding their faces like just Rivaldo like, shit yeah the Rivaldo stuff basically yeah. and that's that was the, brilliant so these guys need to understand like yes you're trying to cheat to get those three points but there's kids watching you as well and, yeah. and if they, they by the way footballers will never change if they can get an advantage on all competitive sports, they will try and get that advantage. Yeah. But it's up to officials to be like, nah, that, that's not good enough. And to be fair, the referee allowed a lot to happen yet against for Chelsea. He was like, there were some challenges where he thought, like, oh, is he going to give it? And he just didn't. He was like, get up, keep going. Crap. Yeah. And I was like, do you know what? Good referee in there. What's his name again? Anthony Taylor, the guy who got... Oh, done. Anthony yeah, Taylor. He said, he said, good referee he, from Anthony hated, Taylor. Wow. No, he did. He had a good referee and he had a good wow. game that day. Apart from the two challenges, the rest of it, he, like, he, he let a lot go. Because you know, like, come on, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's still a con it's not contact well, but it's still still some but physical is. contact. There's shoulder barges yeah. and there's also and he allowed a lot of challenges. Especially when players push. It is, is, but um, some play some people may interrupt contact sport or rugby, American football. Oh yeah, no, no, no. Kind of stuff. And we're not that's saying that's violence. Like, that's, that's, yeah, that's, that's, that's different violent, level. That's aggressive contact. <laughs> yeah, that's that's what wrestling. That is. <laughs> <laughs> almost, almost, mate, almost. But yeah, no, I, I, I totally agree. And uh, I think uh, some the, the footballers they have a responsibility to the younger generation. And again, now you get players like Anthony and Garnachos and shit like that. Like, oh, look at me, I'm just falling over. Ref, where's my? No, what the fuck, bro? You are from. You claim to be from like the favelas of Brazil, where you literally will get shot. And you're telling me a graze on the fucking laces puts you down like that. I don't yeah. think so. Get up. He's a yellow fire. But, but one thing on that, and, and we'll move on if you have nothing else to add on Chelsea. One thing on that is, you know, the rule changes, like, you know, the sort of referee rule changes, 
oh, this rule change will happen in 2026. I'm like, wait, isn't that in two years? <laughs> yeah, what in no. 2025? What, we're just skipping skip past that? that. Yeah. We're just going to, okay, do you know what, lads, right? You've got one more year to cheat like you are doing, right? And then you can't do it anymore. Why don't you just change it the, the, literally the season after or implement it midway through a fucking season? What, you can't do that. Of course you can do that. You know, a two-week break or a Christmas break or whatever it is, right? International break. You come back. By the way, we've got new rules introduced. There you go. You fall down like that again, you are going to get a yellow card. Do you know what I mean? There is absolutely no question about it. Like VAR, for example, you know, all these rule changes, like, you know, with the, is the ball over the line or not? Or what classes as a handball? And, you know, where, you know, natural arm positions and all this, like, what the hell am I meant to do? Just put my hands yeah, in my pockets. Yeah. You know, those can change very quickly. Like, you know, it, within an international, after an international break, you come back, you're like, right, okay, we saw what happened just before the break. You can't do that anymore. Now it's changed. It yeah, takes, agree, it takes yeah. seconds, yeah, seconds to change it. Do you know what I mean? And I don't agree with this, like, oh yeah, we've got a massive rule change in 2026. Fuck that, mate. Do you know what I mean? 2026, the Man City have won it twice since then because some <laughs> some some cheating's going on. And again, I don't give a shit about 2026. Like, let's just be honest. I don't know what's going to happen in 2026. Will I will I not be here? I don't know. Like, let's yeah, be no, realistic. No, I, I want to see something now. Exactly. Yeah. Like, the That's future's it. not predicted. The future's not guaranteed, is it? Exactly. So yeah. No, I'm with exactly. you 100. These rule changes, I say, it's going to come in this play now. Like, you think, why so far ahead? Like, what's happening to in a couple of months or at least next year? Oh, because, sorry, uh, the, the higher ups haven't made money year. yet. <laughs> they haven't well, made the money exactly, yet. That's exactly what it comes down to. And sometimes, speaking of the higher ups on a quick on a quick detour, is I feel like all these other clubs who are getting taken over by billionaires are really being handicapped because Chelsea were allowed to spend X amount of money. However, they liked when Roman came in. Mm-hmm. City were the same, and so on. And now you think of Newcastle, and so and they're like, no, nah, you can't do that. Got to live within your means. You got to do this and, and spend within your means. Sorry. So it sometimes I feel like there is some slight change. It's that hierarchy, isn't it? Possibly. The elite Possibly. trying to get Possibly. their own way again. But uh, yeah, just to add on Chelsea, uh, obviously happy with the victory. Just finish it off before we move on. And of the next game for us in 10 days time is that second leg against Middlesbrough. And then we play three days after in the FA Cup. Yeah, that's uh, that's going to be tough. That's going to be uh, really, really Villa tough. Home. So two home games, <sighs> really, but uh, against Villa at home in the FA Cup. So see Villa either, 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 either they will try to kind of like push for the league and maybe try to get a Champions League spot and put all their eggs in that basket or they're going to, another Premier League team, they may think, actually, you know what, let's go to Stamford Bridge and win this bastard and knock yeah. Chelsea out of the FA Cup, which I hope it doesn't happen, but... No, I so think... Uh, well, that's tough. My, right, listen to this. Three fixtures, Tuesday 23rd, Borough at home. Mm-hmm. So that's Middlesbrough second leg. Friday the 26th, is Villa at home and then we travel to Liverpool on Wednesday the 31st for the Premier League again. So that is some tough games for Chelsea. So wait, Next Tuesday weekend. and Friday? No, so yeah, Tuesday, Carabao. 23rd, yeah. And Friday, then 26th. 26th FA Cup and then 31st oh Premier God. League away to Liverpool. So effectively I mean, playing less than 10 days, we're playing three matches. Three Nine matches. Days, that three is matches. crazy. No, eight, Why days. Would... eight days. Why would they do that? Tuesday and Friday? Surely Tuesday, that's not Friday, a real thing, right? Tuesday, wow. Friday, Wednesday, with a travel in there as well. Wow, wow, that is incredible. I don't, I don't agree with that. Then this is this is why stuff like the Super League, if it ever happens, like which again I'm not against. By the way, I want to. No, see I mean some either, we've said this, haven't we? But the only re- the only way I would agree to the Super League is if you get rid of this fucking bullshit, like EFLs or international fucking friendlies and nation leagues or whatever the hell it is. Yeah, 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 like pointless. Stuff. Get rid of that shit. Get rid of that shit. No one wants to see that. No one cares about nations league match. I've never, never once me and you, we kind of take a break during the international break yeah. when it's nations league. Like we don't give a shit. Oh, be fair, we were doing that the beginning, weren't we? We were doing a little bit of England and stuff at the beginning. They were like, nobody was interested. Nobody was interacting with that. Even we found it boring talking about international because it, it was all predictable for England side of things. So, yeah, Unless I think what they need to do with stuff like that is on the summers that there isn't any football, get the national teams together and be like, right, we're going to play the international league tournament. We're going to have a, a week of, uh, sorry, a month of friendlies. Every four, every four days, five days, you can play a friendly, get all yeah. your friendlies and then make your decisions from there. Because, yeah. yeah, this I is agree. not... I like that. As a, as a consumer, I'm like, oh yeah, loads of football. But as a guy, a fan for a club that is really struggling yeah. and lots of injuries, I'm thinking like, fuck. Tuesday the 23rd football, Friday football, 31st football, fourth football. So that is wow. And four games in a space of 12, 12 days. And the trouble with that is, obviously, especially with Chelsea, is the fact that how many players you have injured already. 
And with that sort of, again, these are young players at the end of the day. Like, obviously, we'll, we, you know, people will say, oh, but they're young, they can, they can go on. No, no, they are yeah. young. Their muscles haven't developed to the full potential yet. And what we do, what the what the FA is doing or the UEFA or FIFA or whatever, what they're doing there is they're kind of hampering their development and they're sort of yeah, pushing these players to get injured, really. that That's the way I look at it. Because but like, they don't care, would, do they? That, no, when you're getting paid, so crack exactly, on yeah. and that's it. They my don't really exactly. care. As long as it's... If, if that's the excuse, then, you know, lower the wages and lower the game time. Like, I'm serious, lower the salary and lower the game time. Yeah, you know, have a salary cap on what the players can can earn. And then we'll see who, um, how, obviously, how committed they are to what, to what they're doing. Because like you said, you know, just re- we've said, we've talked about this so many times, you know, young players on eight year contracts and getting, you know, close to 100,000 a week. Come on, tell me where the commitment is. Tell me where the, where the motivation is to play football there. Like, seriously, there isn't. Uh, it's that happened. Yeah, there isn't one at all, is there? No, it's not just, at all. It's just, what, what, I'm, I'm a millionaire and I can do what the f I want. Like, I yeah. can be who spirit, I want. That. The spirit it's of just... the sport has, has has unfortunately been sucked out of the sport by by the money. And that's just the way it is. Like, you know, remember back in the 90s, early 2000s, we never had these problems. Oh, yeah. Burkamp was signed for £16 million. Like, what? £16 million? Should they sign in youth players for that now? Yeah, do you yeah. know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. And that was that was, that was was uh, record-breaking back then. Like, oh my God, Wenger, he spent £16 million on a, on, on a guy from Inter Milan. It wasn't even Wenger, sorry, like before Wenger, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 94. So it's like, oh my God, 16 million. But again, now that's literally nothing. A player gets 16 million in a year. And that, that is not, year. yeah, of the sudden, that is not good, I'm afraid. That is, that is take, it's just turning the sport into business. And I what don't it is, like it's, that. It's the top, it's, I, I think the problem is where this kind of shifted is when uh, the top guys, the Ronaldos, the Messis, got the high salaries because they were the world best. But then players like Mbappe, because there was potential there, demanded a very high salary. You know, like obviously there's some rumor talk about Mbappe going to Real Madrid and demanding 75 million because he's going to save him 200 million. Uh, in transfer fees but he wants 75 million a year after tax let me say that once again after tax which is probably like 100 plus before <sighs> tax and he wants that now you think to yourself like if Mbappe is getting that and you're a player let's say you and I are doing this podcast and I, I venture somewhere else and I'm doing mine and then I, you say like I see you or you see me getting 100 million you're like hold on a minute like if Ricky's getting 100 million at least I want 25 yeah, or I yeah, want yeah, 50 yeah. Or, and this is how it slowly starts and players and agents will be like listen I can get you more money and in a way it's, get it because if they're making 6 billion on this Premier League deal if you're the they've top guy plenty, for your team, to, they've got plenty of money there. But the only problem is be humble with your money and continue to perform for the shirt. Like I'm, I'm not against you making money because if the business is making ten billion a week, I want you to. I would like to have a hundred grand of it a week, which is what at the very least ten percent, one percent of it. If I if I am the top guy, million, if yeah. I want, yeah, ten million, ten, one million, yeah, less than ten percent, which is one percent actually. So it'll be one yeah. percent on a on a hundred grand. And if that's the case, then you know, if I'm the middle middle guy, not even the top guy, if I'm the middle guy of the company, I would like one percent of that week's earning if I'm yeah. that good or play. So I can understand, but the thing is, just play for the shirt because these fans, obviously, we know what we go through. You've been through it. I'm going through yeah. it. Yeah, like, fucking through. What are talking about? I'm still going through it. <laughs> yeah, but at least there's you. There you see the light at the end of the tunnel. Of course. Well, you know, I don't know. But, I think someone's yeah, put sorry. a boulder in front of that tunnel, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I think someone's just dynamite the fuck out. Of the literally. <laughs> yeah, we are going nowhere, bro. What are you talking about? Down. We have to turn back round. How does the rabbit spirals? I'll find another route. <laughs> But uh, but yeah, no, I know I totally agree, and uh, I think I think it, it needs to change because uh, look at the end of the day, I want to watch football. Like, that's all I care about. I know I want to watch football. I'm not making any money from from watching. I don't. I'm not a betting guy. You're not a betting guy. So for us, it's we have no monetary ties to any of this apart from when we spend money on a shirt now and again and we're not even yeah. buying shirts every season because why would we like you know again what am I going to do with a collection of fucking Arsenal shirts oh yeah. look at this kid when I have a kid or whatever it is oh look look at daddy's collection so what did you play for them no well, yeah. fucking, what does it matter are they signed by anyone no it doesn't matter then does it like why yeah, do you have it's, it's just team? another top with a badge on just another top with a badge so again yeah for me as a fan and majority of the fans out there we just want to watch football and Again, I want to watch football, but not to the point where you're sacrificing human beings. Do you know what I mean? Where they, yeah. let's face it, footballers are kind of like modern day slaves. That's literally what they are. They don't know. They they don't they don't get to decide where they want to go. They think they do, but they don't. 
Yeah. You know what I mean? I yeah. want to go here. No, no, no. You're actually going to go over there. You're going to play for these guys once or a few times, and then maybe we can discuss you going over here. That's it. And the, it's, it's, the, easier than, it's easier than in American sports, don't you think? Because they Amer- all American athletes who play like NBA so they really are the modern day slave because they're like you're getting traded to so and so, and they yeah. have no say in it. They have no but say in it. Yeah. They have a slight say in it, but even now it's like money talks. Like, no, nah, you can't go there because so and so has offered 100 million for you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You can't go to City for 40 million Cucurella because Chelsea are offering to pay 60 million. Yeah. Like, so you're actually going to go there, yeah. Yeah. If they're willing to pay 20 million, let me see if I can get an extra 10 grand a week, which yeah. you probably would. And then all of a sudden that decision's been made up for you. You think you had free will and you made yeah, that. but you choice. did not have free However, will. However, exactly. all these incentives in front of you have made you go exactly where they want you to go. Yeah. Yeah. There was a there was a basketball player called uh, Gary Payton and uh, he played for uh, Seattle Sonics back yeah. in the 90s and he was one of the best like he was one of the best sort of like uh, stealers in the in the game you know what I mean they literally called him Gary the Glove Payton right wow. and uh, he said on an interview which I, I heard recently he said basically he goes the owner um, I didn't even know I was getting traded until someone came in the locker room b- just before that that particular match and he said oh I heard you're going to I, can't, I think it was like New York or something like that he was like what do you mean I'm not going to New York yeah I've just heard that you're going to New York and then he goes yeah and then I have a chat with the manager that, uh, with the owner yeah I was getting traded to New York so he's like, I was I was getting ready to put my my Sonic shirt on, go go play this match, and then all of a sudden I'm getting told by some other geezer who's got nothing to do with this. Yeah, who's like, oh, I heard you, yeah, yeah, I heard you going to New York. Like, what the fuck you mean? So again, you're right, it, it, it is. And look, the thing is with American sports, I never, I don't get where the competition comes from. By the way, where the fuck is the promotion? Where's the relegation? That is competition. I don't yeah. care about this East v West and oh, this conference versus that conference. Like, bro, like, hang on, it means nothing. So, yeah, so no, you, no, no. if you, if you're a bad team, so you just stay in the league, basically. You just stay where you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah you just yeah, stay yeah. in the league. Then, but where, where is the point in that? Do you know what I mean? And then you get celebrity. And anyway, look, American you sports. Sound like that, you sound like that show Ted Lasso that I was watching when he goes like, wait, there's. N- you get relegated? Yeah. Shit. In America, we don't do that. You just stay where you are. So, yeah, yeah I, no. I don't I'm, get American sports either. I don't get it. I don't get it. I really don't. Like, with basketball. No, no, I get, sorry, I get the sports, sorry, but I don't yeah. get the method of the comp- method competition. Of it, yeah, yeah. Like, competition. How, like, how the competition is made up of. And then they're the champions of that team and then of that country. They're like, oh, we're world champions. They're like, bro, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what are you talking about? Baseball. Oh, baseball world, world, world champions. What are you talking about? What, what, you, yeah, what are you talking about? World Series. You're playing other states. How about you just say like you're the United States champions and that and leave it at that. I've never seen a baseball World Cup cricket. I've seen a cricket World Cup where literally international teams play each other and then you get to be crowned the the World Cup champions. You're the world champions. But in America, like, you know, the NBA, like how are you world champions? Right. No, you're NBA champions. Right. That's your association. You are that champion. Okay. Until you go play internationally, which obviously they do now, uh, which FIBA and, and, and again, FIBA is not even close to the NBA. Do you know what I mean? FIFA's yeah, supposed no, to be this, like, you know, it's literally the FIFA of, of basketball, and it's right there in the name. But yeah, and, and the worst one is, last last thing on this, the worst one is American football. Like, oh, we are the world champions. What are you talking about, you bro? The only country the only, that plays, bro. The, literally the only country that plays this sport. Are you kidding me? Go play rugby, and then you could class yourselves as the fucking world champions. It, the the American it. football, and it, it's like the name, it, it does exactly what it says on the tin. It's American football that's only played in America. Yeah. It's like, that's why it's called American anyway, football, yeah. Professionally, like it's a sport that I don't know. What, yeah, I always thought about this the other day. I was thinking if they get these coaches, you know, like Saudis do, getting all these great names over, like the Ronaldos, the Benzemas, and so on, to kind of boost up their football. And I was thinking, like, maybe like they just start thinking, or like the Russians, or somebody gets money and says, uh, let's get Bill Belichick on here and then trying to start a team, you know, because it's got to start somewhere, yeah, yeah, have that snowball in effect, yeah, a couple yeah. of years, a decade, and then all of a sudden have like, I don't know, like America versus US, uh, US, or America versus France. Uh, England versus America, etc., and so on in American football, and then see are they the best? Are they not the best? Because in NBA, we they are the best. We see it every oh, four yeah, years at the Olympics. It's not like, even, yeah, that's not even. Yeah, it's not even yeah. for debatable, is it? Because the sport has had so much investment from such a young age. You know, what I mean, like some European teams come close, but not. But it's not an American close. sport at the end of the day. It's, it's an American it's invented, sport. Yeah. yeah, it's invented in America, and that's where, like you said, that's where the investment happens. You know, from day one. But the good thing with basketball is the fact that they played in the Olympics and they do have a, a basketball. Uh, what is it a world cup do you know what i mean they have the fiba world championships which is yeah. fair enough because then you get the best players from america versus the best players from europe 
fair dues or from the rest of the world that's fine I agree with that and obviously you know me you've known me for a long that's time a world love, competition yeah yeah I love basketball I always have done always have done so like I, I understand that but then when you've got baseball which is literally played in the United States and Puerto Rico it's like what the fuck <laughs> what? what Puerto the Rico world? right it's not even a real country in a way it's literally I'm not saying that to, to be dismissive no, 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 of Puerto Rico yeah, yeah, yeah. but it's literally a, a, a territory of America yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's it's it was for a while it was it, that people thought it was going to be the fifty first state of America. Do you know what I mean? Puerto Rico. So it, it's not a world, and you need to stop that right now. But I agree with you, NFL wise, American football. I'm I'm not saying there isn't people overseas who love watching it, who love playing it, but not to the level, you know, for it to be classed as the world championship yeah. or the world champions. You know what I mean? So or the Super Bowl, like oh, the, we have the most watched. No, you don't. Like, have you seen how many people watch the World Cup final? It's like I triple, know. quadruple your numbers. It's not it's even, not even the World Cup final, even the cricket World Cup. In fact, it's in India versus Pakistan in the cricket or something like that is like insane and you see this now where podcasters in America and obviously here in the States as, in the UK as well not just the States are talking about like have, do you know how many followers has LeBron James got 60 something million on Twitter or Instagram or something yeah, like that like, recall, like, like, this cricket, yeah that's it yeah like 300 yeah. million or something like, 300 million yeah like exactly insane. And it's like, like a third a of the population yeah there's a third of the population of India I'll, I'll be honest I'll be, I'll be honest though I, I don't mind cricket for a while I didn't understand it but obviously it's been explained to me over time and I've watched a few matches especially in the World Cup that was last year beginning yeah. of last year I watched a lot of cricket and I enjoyed it I really did enjoy it because again once you understand the sport you kind of enjoy it more because you think you start thinking tactics like, oh why isn't he doing this why why yeah, are yeah, they yeah, so yeah. spread out in the field why don't it come closer and then something happens you think oh yeah, I get it now that's why it doesn't the happen the ball is played isn't it like exactly. the, ball, the ball is it fast spin or like is it going to exactly. be a spin exactly. or is it going to be like a fast paced one yeah I played batsman, cricket how my old job yeah, we I did at my old job, we did a company versus company, and they were like, uh, I, I loved the batting, got to field, and I was just like, I stood there for a while, just absolutely doing nothing, like literally nothing, because the ball never came player. my way. Love I was just there like this. I used to love the rounders, which is like the closest, yeah. I guess, to baseball. To baseball, yeah, school, yeah, yeah. You know yeah, what yeah. I mean? Underhand, though, isn't it? Underhand, I Under, oh, underarm, yeah, there was nothing yeah, else yeah. there, underarm. But what I used to love is, and I'm sure people can relate as well, especially if you're in the UK, oh, he's very good, move further back. I mean, somebody who could really hit the yeah, ball, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hit, a yeah. lot further back. No, I, I enjoyed it. I, I enjoyed. Let's not reminisce. Let's not go down reminiscing. No, no, no. This, this, this we're, just talking, we're talking about the sport itself, isn't it? Really, and the, no rounders cricket baseball like I I, lo I genuinely I really really like baseball I get it as a sport I enjoy watching it I've seen it live when I lived in Toronto I, I just really really enjoyed it because again you can understand the passion that that the yeah. fans have especially over that side of the world you know but you know I, I, I really do enjoy it but again let's just it's not a world sport let's just That's be it. clear I'm on just that really gonna say, yeah, I'm glad you said that I was going to say we're not trashing the sport it's a good sport oh, absolutely, enjoy. Not, absolutely not just the title of world champions is yeah. maybe just say champions if you're anything like me my headwear is only New Era caps New Era is the official headwear provider for NFL MLB and the NBA but New Era caps are not just headwear they are a global brand of culture style and self-expression I'm a huge fan of rap and hip-hop, and growing up, I used to watch artists spot in the New Era caps. I was mesmerized by the way they used to fit just perfectly. I remember my first ever New Era cap. It was a Blue Jays cap. I lived in Toronto, so it had to be. My favorite from my personal collection is my LA Dodgers. I have two different versions, Fitted and the 940. What I love most about New Era is the quality of the product is second to none. I refuse to wear any other brand caps when New Era is available. So if you want to dress like your favorite sports stars and musicians, visit the official website neweracap.com and use the code TASHMIC at checkout for 15% off. That's neweracap.com and use the code TASHMIC for 15% off. NFL, I don't really, I don't really, I, I get it and I understand the sport, but I just don't really care for it that much, to be honest. There's too NFL much stopping, I don't is, like it. Yeah, that's it. I only like watching the highlights. I'll be honest with yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, I'm the 10 same. minutes, I feel like as if a four hour match can really be put on 10 minutes and this 10 minute highlights reels or like half an hour match. It could be a half an hour game because of all the stoppage. That's why I used to watch the Super Bowl, but four hours, it was just so much and at swapping. The time, and, and at the time that it's, it's on as well. Time. Yeah. 
But I think uh, I'm with you on the stop it for NFL. Like you kind of get in some momentum and they're like, right, time out. And we're having this. You're like, well, what's happening now? It's like three minutes away. What's going on? Defensive line comes on and then you've got the Super Bowl. uh, For example, you've got the Super Bowl halftime show. And I'm like, fuck me. That's like 45 minutes. That's literally a half of football. Like, and this is, and this is why, obviously, I think Americans look at us and like, oh, those guys are very simple. You know, two 45 minute halves and that's it. No breaks. Yes, it's a sport. Like I'm not, you know, for us, it's a yeah. sport. It's not really entertainment. Like obviously we are entertained standard, but it's a sport. Do you That's know what I mean? It. It's a sport. That's it. Whereas NFL, they treat too much of entertainment. Oh, every two minutes we have to have an ad break. I've watched, did, have you ever watched NBA? Like any of the NBA matches that are on? Uh, I've stopped watching it simply for that a long reason. Time. Yeah, exactly. Because it's like, oh, after every, after uh, so during a 20 second timeout, You've got like a two minute, you've got a two minute advert. I'm like, wait, wasn't it was supposed to be a 20 second time out? Like, how do you yeah, work that we, out? Are we still live? What's going on? Yeah, what's going on? Like, how, do, but yeah, no, I, obviously for, for me, it was a slam dunk competition back in the day. But anyway, yeah, yeah enough yeah, reminiscing. Yeah, Let's yeah, go back yeah, to football. Um, uh, the next match that obviously was on was the Newcastle Man City match. Did you catch any of that, by the way? Uh, I caught bits of it. I didn't get to watch all of it from the start, but I watched, uh, I saw all the goals. Uh, yes. I even put on the text because it was before City scored. It was just, I even messaged the boys there on the group chat and I said, it's just so boring watching City. This was, whole tiki yeah. tacker yeah. keeping the ball. And by the way, that Bernardo Silva finish was incredible finish. I'm not taking anything away from Absolute it. Absolutely. I feel watching City is the same as watching Real Madrid, uh, sorry, Barca back in the day when they won yeah, everything. Yeah, yeah. It was amazing that first season. I was like, wow. In- and incredible then second football, season, isn't I was yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah incredible. You're like, wow, amazing. And then I'm like, man, it's like watching it's like watching your friend who you meet for the first time and like, oh, I've not seen each other and do a backflip. You're like, fucking hell, dude. How the hell did you do that? You're amazed. Yeah. But every time you meet him, he does a backflip, you're like, all right, mate, relax now. I yeah, know take you it easy. You've got to pull your back out. Take it easy, bro. Yeah, so can you do something else? Can you do a front flip, bro? Like, I'm sick of dynasty and backflips. That's how I feel. No, I think so. <laughs> With Pep like Guardiola, City, like, every, team, every team that Pep takes over, it's just like he's teaching them the same thing. And it's like, dude, can you can you do anything else? Can you show me something I else? Mean, yeah, don't you feel like it just sucks the joy? Though? I know what he does. It, it does. Just it does. suck yeah. the energy out of the opposition and then be able to score goals. And it's fine. You can do that. Fine, As a City yeah, fan, I'm sure they're all like, oh my God, he, wow. And watching City is incredible. I just, I'm, I'm not a fan of watching City. I'm really no, not. When City are playing against someone, I'm like, nah, I know, I'll, I know they'll probably win. Uh, yesterday I only had a bit of joy when I saw the two goals from Isaac and Gordon by the way I love Isaac I know I put this on the chart I just want to say this again he is quality he is quality as an Arsenal I'm fan, so I was, disappointed we don't I want them, I saw I want them to spend 100 million on Isaac on him, over Tony yeah. any day, every day, yeah, all year, yeah, yeah, every season. Yeah. <laughs> just flirt with the idea because I think Newcastle are going to be under financial fair play. So yeah. There's a bit of scrutiny there. Just flirt with the idea. Just go, here's 100 mil for Isaac. Yeah. I, I, just look for that. I there's agree. no need to I go totally for uh, Ossiemi or whatever, Oss- Ossiman or whatever his Ossiman, name is yeah. in Napoli. I'm trying to get his yeah. name wrong. Or, uh, no, he's not proven, but it's like in the Premier League. You saw what he can do, man. He's doing it. He's doing it. Get he's this literally guy. doing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. the guy you want. But uh, he was yeah, so no, threatening. He was so threatening against uh, City yesterday. And again, especially in the first half, by the way, because again, it was kind of like a tale of two halves, which you, do, yeah. you can expect because that's what Pep does. That's what Klopp does. Do you know what I mean? Like, that's what they do. It's, yeah. oh, okay. So you, you wanted to play like that in the first half right you play like that in the second half that's it I'm, I'm a fucking sack all of you bastards and you know what they get scared because they actually mean it so they, they you will get yeah. benched but uh, I think it started off great for Newcastle straight off the bat uh, Sean Longstaff got a goal it was obviously disallowed it was offside and rightly so as well but uh, from that moment I was like oh okay fair enough and I said to you on the on the podcast on the previous pod I said to you that you know it's going to be a good game I think I think I predicted this as a draw, if I'm not mistaken, because I thought, you know, they've both got attackers, they both can score goals, and it was just going to be a battle for the midfield, which it kind of was. But honestly, that first half from Newcastle, they were just impressive, absolutely impressive. And I mean, did you did you see Gordon's goal by the way? Did you see that pass from Bruno Gomares? Like, yeah, the vision on that pass as well was just incredible. But But Bruno was was watching that, and she was like. Wow, I can't believe that just happened. Like she watched that and she was like, "Oh my god, that was such a great goal." And yeah, as a not really a football watcher, you know, she if she can appreciate that, then yeah, it, it had to be a great. It was just a fantastic pass. It really was, and a yeah, great finish from is. Gordon as well. But then equally, second half, as you just mentioned, a game of two two halves. It was like uh, Mister Mister. <laughs> 
Mr. Assist comes on, Mr. Goal Scorer, Mr. <laughs> Mr. New Haircut, Mr. Who Changed the Game to get your... Did you know he changed the way that people do deals now? He decided to get data analysts instead of getting his uh, football agent to, uh, to negotiate his new contract. And then he kind of told them how important he is to Man City. And that's why he wants 400 grand a week. He's the first player to do that. He's that not on 400 grand a week. He's on 400 grand a week. I was going to say, that's, uh, I'm not surprised. And the rest. Yeah, I'm yeah, not and surprised the rest at all. Sure. <laughs> but uh, he got a data analyst to kind of show visually for them which pie charts and graphs and so on to kind of say that. So, and by the way, I love Kevin De Bruyne. I loved Same. it when he was at Chelsea. I saw glimpses of what this while he was playing for Chelsea, but Mourinho ruined him. Mourinho yeah. wanted him to track back and do what Jose Mourinho does to football players. You work your socks off front and back, front and back. And he just couldn't hack it at Chelsea. And he didn't really get me enough opportunities. Not that he couldn't hack it. But no, he didn't, he didn't at all. Now, like, wow, like this is what we could have had. Soon as as soon as he stood up from the bench to move to go in, I was like, "Fuck, this is literally it now." And again, I, I'm not the only one who, who probably thought that. Most no, no. even even Eddie Howe was probably stood there in <laughs> in his dugout, like, "Ah, oh, shit!" All right, someone someone come come and tackle him. Someone just go ahead and just yeah. slide tackle him over here, please. Just get rid of him. <laughs> Rumor has it sixty thousand people or forty thousand people in Newcastle watching it just sit, sighed. Fuck. As yeah. soon as the Brown is set up, like, like around St. James, is all you heard was fuck. Everybody looked around, like, what the hell was that? And I'm not surprised, mate, because again, that guy comes on 69th minute for Bernardo Silva so for the goal scorer, right? So this is how much Pep doesn't give a shit how good you are on that pitch. He's yeah. like, right, no, if I need to move you, you're getting moved, unless you're messy, obviously. But comes on 69th minute, 74th minute, gets a fucking goal. And what a goal that was, by the what way. Like, goal, from, the, out, the way, yeah. from outside the box, but I'll be honest with you, like when you see that again, the keeper was blocked. The keeper had people in front of him, so he couldn't see where that where that was going to yeah, go. But then me, again, yeah. it was just, you know, Kevin De Bruyne. You don't, you don't know whether that's fluke or did De Bruyne mean that? Did De Bruyne oh, that. see that? that? Yeah, I think so as well. Like, he you could that. see that the keeper's vision is, is blocked, so therefore he just thought, oh, I'll just slot this in here. He's, he's that good. He is that good. De Bruyne is like looking looking at 2030 right now. We're in 2024. Yeah. He's already looking at 2032. Do you know he's what I mean? He's already studied the rule change, 26 rule change. 2026 20, rule change. <laughs> <laughs> he knows that. He knows that shit. He already but knows that, yeah. Honestly, he comes on and then and obviously provides an assist for Bob at the end, 91st minute, and that's that's all she wrote. That's the end of that. Good night. Thank you so much for watching, and uh, take care of yourselves. That's literally what he said to everyone. Like, <laughs> I won't be surprised if he actually said that to her, but yeah, he's such a fantastic player, and yeah, he, he's unplayable, man. Like, he is, he is the best midfielder in the world. I don't give a shit what people say about Drew Bellingham. Drew Bellingham yeah. has got a long way to go before he reaches Kevin De Bruyne like you know status and Kevin De Bruyne I'd put him up there with with a Zidane to be honest that's how good this guy is like he is just pff, unreal so yeah he's the game changer and um, yeah that, that was it for City and that 2-2 I was like the assist, oh this is good it? Yeah, the assist, even the assist was incredible yeah. as well yeah it was. It really was. And I love that guy. Love KD. So yeah, you know, I'm 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 not happy with the fact that he's back now. Um, the fact that Arsenal are five points behind um, Liverpool, and obviously City, they're going to get Haaland back as well with the Bruyne behind him. It's it's almost a cheat code, mate. It really is a cheat it's, code. It's over already, isn't it? It's, it's over, over before, before it starts. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. You know that's the yeah. starter pack. You see De Bruyne. Don't, how don't you feel sorry, by the way, for De Bruyne? I'm glad I just want De Bruyne very quickly. That how awful his national team play, like how they all perform for individual accolades rather than as a collective team. They just the Lukaku's that everybody. Yeah, same as Portugal as well. But just think, you feel sorry for De Bruyne of how good he is and won't do anything with his country. No, we can't because, again, like you said, everyone in the Belgian team, they think they are the best. Do you know what I mean? Because for their clubs, they at some point, they were the best. You know, in Thibaut yeah. Portois, for example, from the keeper. In Lukaku, for a while, he was the best. Do you know what I mean? And, yeah, especially and then at you Inter, got yeah. Some, yeah, and then you and then you got De Bruyne, who is clearly the best, and he, he doesn't even best. tell himself that. Everyone else yeah. knows that he's the best, and yeah, they, they they are an individual team, and that's why they will never ever win anything. And I'm and I'm always happy when Belgium get either get knocked out or lose to a shitty team or whatever it is. I'm happy and I'm there to watch it. Not yeah, I'm happy Bruyne, now, by the way. Yeah, not because of De Bruyne. I want him to win shit like you know big accolades like that. But because of the rest of the team, it's like, no, do you know what? Go fuck yourselves. You're yeah. Belgium. Like, seriously, let's just face it. The only good thing that came out of you were waffles. Let me just be honest, right? <laughs> waffles and De Bruyne. That's literally this is the name of the podcast, by the way. And then it has that. Don't forget. Oh, sorry, Eden. my bad, my bad. Don't forget. Yeah. Don't forget. I keep, man like 
<laughs> is that forgetting <laughs> because like, you know i am now happy because back then i wanted de bruyne because obviously i like de bruyne and eden hazard i wanted eden him hazard, of course, yeah, to do course. something with his country but once he retired and then i'm just like you know what fuck you guys and especially if kevin de bruyne is not playing i'm like you guys are just so shit as a oh, team i don't watch them i don't watch them yeah no, no, but need, but if they played like a major competition, I think they went to the semi-final in the F- FA, uh, sorry, FA Cup in the World Cup and so on, World and they Cup, just got yeah, beat. Yeah. Especially the one, and he's just like a commentator always says, "This is the golden generation for Belgium," and they do nothing, and yeah. and that's the reason why it's like Galacticos of Real Madrid. We've got too many stars who think they're stars. Yeah. It's not enough. You need some Conor Gallagher's in there just to do some running. You need, you know it's I mean? a team. Like, it's a team at the end of the day, mate. Like that's literally what it is. You know what I mean? Like for the France '98 World Cup, not many people will remember Emmanuel Petit. But he was very vital to that World Cup winning team. Do you oh, know what I mean? Absolutely. Like, he really yeah, was. Yeah. Forget Zidane, forget Henri. Like, Henri wasn't even a big name back then in 98. Yeah. Yeah, yeah he, he was, was good. But, you know, yeah, he was learning his craft. But I'm saying, like, you need players like that. Like, uh, uh, Jokaev, for example. Johan Jokaev. You need players like that. Not many people will remember yeah, him. Love that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Do you know what I mean? I not remember many... he played for Bolton, believe it or not. Yeah, exactly. He played for Bolton. And again, this is this is this is what I mean is that you need players who don't have that big name in the international on the international stage to do the dirty work. Do you know what I'm saying? Like not many people like obviously you remember everyone will remember Messi for the twenty twenty two World Cup, but they won't remember what's his partner called? Um Oh yeah, uh, the Rodrigo guy who DePaul. protected him everywhere. Yeah, DePaul, that's it. DePaul, yeah. Yeah. Again, but you need players like protected that because everywhere. Yeah, you need players like that. And and that's what and that's what I mean. So yeah, with De Bruyne, it's it's a shame. But you know, in, in terms of individual individual talent, shit, he's unmatched. Yeah, no, and I need him. I want him to win a Ballon d'Or once because he is a full, well deserved. If they give Messi another Ballon d'Or, I'm gonna flip. For what reason? Would no, exa- get I don't know. Why did he get it the last time? Why did he get it last time? Yeah, yeah. Played for a PSG team. He played for a. No, he wasn't even PSG. Yeah, because he won the World Cup. That's why they gave him. Because he won the World Cup, and they were like, "It's not good enough." He he wasn't good enough to be. He's the best in the world for that year, because he wasn't like he got the best player in the World Cup. That's fine done but he's not you don't win a Ballon d'Or because you were good for a month at a tournament no, no absolutely and he wasn't good I mean, for a month in the tournament like just to be honest he had, yeah, he had that, a few good let's games let's say he was let's say he was yeah, you don't get still a, not a good reason that goes from for the whole year for you to be like oh actually you're the best in the world because you did really perform really well for that month in the tournament and yeah, you know not, tournament has its own reward you got the best player at the tournament Ballon d'Or is completely different yeah uh, I, I agree I agree there should be different yeah, criteria on how it's judged what I'm looking for here, it's 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 fixed. It's it's bullshit because obviously during COVID, Lewandowski should have won it and never did. They were like, oh, we're not going to do it this year, and then the next year, all of a sudden, Messi won it again or Messi something like that. Like, what the fuck? What it's the just fuck? it's just bullshit. It's just bullshit. So yeah. Because let's just face it, when Messi in that PSG team, he didn't. He was no. He should have been nowhere near that Ballon d'Or list. He was no, not no. good enough. Like again, when you when you consider he won the Ballon d'Or the previous years because he was genuinely the best, but then you give it to him. Because he what he scored 15 goals in a PSG team that fucking did nothing. That's not good mm-hmm. enough. Like you know, you should probably take a Ballon d'Or back. And it's like, hey, you know what? Give me, give me that back. Like, yeah, I don't think I think we were wrong. You're down to six. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> give, give me that back. Stop it. Stop the madness. But no, I think and when Ronaldo won them, he was genuinely the best player. Like he didn't. Ronaldo didn't get one because ah, uh, if I get Ronaldo, we'll give him one. Yeah, go on then. Yeah. Go on then. Yeah. No, he he worked his fucking ass off. And if he stayed with that new team before, obviously Ten Hag decided he was like, oh, I'm bigger than Ronaldo. Ronaldo is like, mate, you will never, ever be bigger than Ronaldo, like ever, maybe in weight, but that's the only <laughs> time, do you know what I'm saying? But I don't think it, anybody's it, bigger than Ronaldo globally, to be honest. Absolutely yeah. no one ever. And again, I, I was always on the Messi camp, but that doesn't mean that I don't appreciate Ronaldo and how great he fucking was. Do you know what I mean? And if he stayed with that my new team, he probably would have deserved the Ballon d'Or more than Messi fucking for his shitty World yeah, Cup. Yeah. Because again, Ronaldo would have carried a team, a whole team, and he did. He scored 25 goals the season before Ten Hag arrived. Do you know what I mean? 25 goals for a Man United team. Show me one player that. Or, or do you know what? Fuck that. The combined squad of Man United this season, they have not scored 25 goals. Do you know what yeah. I mean? But Ronaldo was doing yeah. it by himself. He's like, yeah, I'll do what? Fuck, 25 goals. Now that, mate. Do you know what I mean? A bit of a tot in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, now that. <laughs> so <laughs> again, no, I, I agree. I agree. As much as obviously I, I love I love Messi, one of my favorite players of all time, there, there's certain things which I disagree with. It's like, mm, I don't know about that, mate. You know, you clearly get in, you know, favoritism here because you yeah, get in, getting, you've got that name, so... He's getting favoritism in the MLS as well. I don't know if you've seen some of the things. Like he just he goes and fouls players, and they're like play on, and then he gets like a graze, and then he goes down. They're like, oh, that's a yellow card challenge. How dare you even tackle the Messi? You know he's got again, shares in MLS, right? 
Yeah, yeah, he gets paid. Yeah, yeah. yeah he shares in MLS, he shares <laughs> by Adidas, he gets money all over. It's like a so the refs, a year are, uh, it works out. the refs, the referee, and their boss. Their boss, yeah, literally that. So, do you know what I'm but, but again, it goes back to that entertainment, and let Messi do what he can do. How dare he take the ball off Messi? There is none of that competition. It's all entertainment in the MLS still, especially with Messi and the Shiraz that Beckham's ball putting Messi, Suarez, Busquets, and hey, Jordi Alba all in the same. You're team. spreading the spot. No, but like no, like like you said before, though, like with the NFL, like you'd get a coach Belichick, for example, to to coach out on the French team or the brand new and uh, the brand new American football French team, for example. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So you need you need to spread the sport like that, and I am totally totally up for it. I mean, these guys are like in the fucking mid to late thirties. You know what I'm saying? I don't give a shit. Like they're not for me. I don't class I know, the MLS. No, no, exactly. I don't class the MLS as anything. Like you know, I don't I don't remember the last time an MLS team were actually in the in the FIFA World Cup for clubs. I don't remember yeah. it. I think Chicago yeah. Fire maybe. Didn't you play Chicago Fire? Did you Chelsea play when when you won it? It was a Brazilian team, wasn't it? I think it was a Brazilian it was, team. Uh, we played the, yeah, well, we played two. Obviously, we got beat one time and we played one the second time with uh, Thomas Tuchel. But it's just, it's a team, but you're right. I've never seen an MLS team neither. But again, it's just, I just feel like for David Beckham's just done it because it's a new club and he's just trying to get the biggest names there, which That's is fine, fine, which I totally fine, understand. Because that. again, you get but kids it's involved. Barcelona, I'm just like, meh. No, no, I, I, I agree. And to be I fair, the three play, the three play, no, three, two out of the four. I just can't stand Busquets and Suarez. I just can't stand them. That's fair. That's fair. But yeah, again, Bus- you you can't deny the impact that they had on the game oh, no, in the, the last that ten, in, in Florida, fifteen years. You know. Yeah, yeah, no, no, I agree with that, and I'm not taking anything away from being <clears> quality. Like I even said, Busquets should have deserved the Ballon d'Or or even a nomination before Jorginho did. Who the hell is Jorginho yeah. before Busquets on that Holden midfield role? I agree. But, I totally uh, agree with just, you. It's just as individuals and as sports people. That's fine. The way yeah, I agree. That. But no, they're having a, a, an amazing impact in Miami and, you know, they're doing their things. And to be fair, as boys, we're better than to let's, oh, do you know what, let's regroup to, to a different team, lads, and uh, let's keep making some money. The weather's great. The food's not that bad. And we game yeah. shit lot. So no, I, I agree, and and I think for me, it's it's the fact that, like I said, that it's the the awareness that they that they're building up, uh, the the sort of the prestige almost they're building up with soccer over in America. Do you know what I mean? And and I'm up for for that because again, it's a global sport. This is why it's the biggest sport in the world. I don't give a sh- American listeners if you listen to this, right? It's the biggest sport in the world. Let's just not even. That's not even up for discussion. That's not even up for debate. Yeah, that's not even up for debate. I don't care what you think. Oh, the NFL is good. No, mate. No, in the southern states it may be good, but no, in 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 the, in the global context stage. of the whole world, yeah. no, it isn't. It's nowhere close to being a, a good sport. So yeah, I, I, for that reason alone, I'm happy that they've done that and Beckham has done that because again Beckham is from from the UK he has grown up with football and he yeah. understands the impact that football has on the world but he's like you know what massive country over here these fuckers you know they still call it soccer which is like you know what the Brits used to call it back in the 1800s do you know what I mean so it's like yeah, yeah I'm gonna go over there I'm gonna put some education over there with training grounds and get the good coaches get the good players in so so kids can grow up and like oh I want to be like Messi because look let's face it like Florida has got predominant uh got, has got a majority of you know Mexican Latin, uh, yeah. yeah Latin Latin Americans who live there and guess what Latin Americans they don't grow up with no fucking yeah, baseball or NFL yeah, they are yeah, football yeah. Fans, nah. it's a whole yeah. continent that are football fans. For God's sake, do you know what I mean? Brazil, yeah. we've had the best players from Brazil. We've had the Brazilian team are the best globally in terms of like you know the the cups that they've won, the World Cups that they've won, the the players that they've you know that they just keep churning out every single fucking generation. They've got great players yeah. coming out. So yeah, it's it's for that reason I, I'm glad. But anyway, look, let's uh. Let's move it on. To yeah, we kind of, we kind of, uh, yeah, diverted for a little bit. We went from Newcastle right. and talked about Brazilians. So obviously, no, but no the fine. next game was Everton Villa. Obviously, you went nil nil. I went two one. I don't even know what it finished. To be honest, I didn't really watch it. I was out nil, today. Nil. Went out to get some lunch. So finished nil nil. Oh, well done you. But did I actually, did uh, I actually predict that right? You predicted nil nil. Oh, yeah. Wow. Oh, that's pretty. Oh shit. Because I'm sure when I heard the podcast back, I was like, I heard myself say, "Oh no, I think Villa going to take a W here." Fair enough. I'm, I'll take it. I'll take it. Hey, boring match. I watched yeah. the. I watched. Did you watch it? I, I watched the the most parts of it, and it was a boring match, mate. It really was. There was nothing good about it. Uh, Aston Villa didn't offer anything. Everton had a couple of good chances at the beginning, like Calvert Lewin 
honestly one of the worst strikers I've ever seen. Like my, my eyes have ever ever seen on TV. It's he is shocking. And Good by the way, Calvert Lewin. By the way, sorry. Before, uh, go on. I was going to say, and this is considering the fact that I've watched Nicholas Jackson play as well. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and I still think Calvert Lewin is the worst striker in the Premier League right now. I haven't watched him enough to. I'm going to do a Wenger. I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it. <laughs> you should but, do uh, Mourinho. If I say, if I say it, anything, I'll get in trouble. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah. Uh, no, but uh, what was I going to say? Did he? He didn't start as a striker for Everton. I remember him as a centre back or right back or something when he first broke into the start in eleven. Dominic Calvin Lewin was either a winger or a left back or a right back, See? one or the other. He was not a centre forward. And then all of a sudden they played him centre forward. I remember that very first game he came on because I was like. It's a strange transition. When I saw the next Everton team, he was at the top. I was like, why on earth is he there? And But I don't all of a sudden, now he's their number nine. So yeah, if anybody knows and remembers any Evertonians around or any football knowledge, walking encyclopedias, be like, actually, no, you know what? Ricky's right or Ricky's wrong. Okay. Let us know. Okay. Get in touch on Facebook and let us know. But yeah, I could have swore he was, or his first game he played was a right back. I don't know why. Maybe possibly, that's why. They, possibly. I, I don't know. But yeah, that's something to think of. Okay, I thought you might have known, but you don't. No, okay, well, again, sorry. I, I know it's hard to believe, right? But I genuinely do not care for Calvert Lewin. Like, <laughs> just I could not care less for him. Fine. And the fact very that hard he, to believe. And the fact that he was linked with Arsenal a couple of seasons ago before his big injury, I was just like, why are we? Why? And again, you. I was listening to Arsenal podcasts dedicated to Arsenal they're like oh we should bring Calvert-Lewin in for what for for fucking what would you want to bring Calvert-Lewin in for do you know what I'm saying yeah. bring in Nicholas Jackson for God's sake <laughs> hey we're happy I, I would literally pack his bags I will drive him I know you would Arsenal. I know you would I know you would but again I think with Nicholas Jackson if he plays for Arsenal I think at some point next season he would actually be quite decent because they, he'd have a good coach around him and good you know good coaches around him look let's that, just it's not even the coaching with him he can't finish one on one situations like it doesn't matter what you do it's at something is going to be an instinct and a God given talent to be able for right. you to put the yeah, ball in the back of the net yeah. you can good coaching can gain good positions to make good runs or timely runs but in order for you to put the ball in the back of the net nobody like, come on no, no, no coaching is going to do that you just need to know how to do that you need to know where you are in and outside of that spatial, box. spatial know, awareness that's the word spatial like, awareness you need to have spatial awareness like Eddie Nketiah he may not be the best striker ever but he knows how to score goals if he's in that yeah. 6 yard box or within that 18 like within that 18 yard box boom he's straight in there but he doesn't have the other talent of Nicholas Jackson the running yeah, the pace he doesn't have the running the yeah. strength the pace and that. that's it and that's why you're going to find one so that's it's fair, like it's one fair. of the best finishers for me obviously like and of, apart from our nine is Rude Van Disteroy I remember Van yeah. Disteroy you know, that six yard box just like popping it in yeah. popping it in a little bit like what Harlan does everything is six around that area spatial awareness I know where I am I know where the ball's going to go that's it Before it's all know, about it, it's, it's a science isn't it it's a science like oh well I'm here at the edge of the six yard box if I hit it this way I know where the ball's going to go and that's it sometimes like that's you said that is that's, that's just your talent like your brain that's how it works that's the science in your brain that's so. but no um, yeah this match was fucking boring man oh my god there was nothing offered from any from from either team just shocking shocking performances and this is what I'm saying like Aston Villa you know they keep playing like this unfortunately they are not going to be in that top four for much longer and um, look my words will come true mark my words <laughs> yes <laughs> um, yes and obviously the last match of today was Man United Tottenham and uh, just straight off the bat obviously I had fuck United fuck Spurs but, fuck I definitely, United but I definitely wanted United to, to steal a win from Spurs because obviously you know they are very close to Arsenal right now and I don't I don't care for that that much but uh, you know third minute Hoyland scores I was like get in can't wait for that this is going to be a great game and then fucking Richarlison gets up there and scores and it's like are you are you kidding me What's what, where's the defenders what's going on here but they left him open they genuinely left him open and it was not it was, wasn't was good it just wasn't good yeah, at all yeah and um and then Rashford, obviously, he gets a goal, which I'm happy for because I don't mind Rashford. I think he's he's the only player probably that I don't mind from from Man United. Uh, the rest I couldn't couldn't give a shit about, to be honest with you. But uh, yeah, good. Uh, he had a good pass, good finish um, from the sort of like inside the box, curls it in, boom, great goal, nice one from Rashford. But uh, yeah, and then you know, two two, Bentancur scores. I thought they were lucky to be fair United with the two goals the way the ball just kind of sat for them you know like it's one of those where the defender makes a tackle and he just fell to Hoyland's feet yes now I understand he had to take a touch and then great finish great strike but just the situation as a build up he was just like I think it was in it but Doji 
tackled yeah, Rashford. Doggy, yeah, like doggy, yeah. Rash- at first you're like, wow, Rashford, what an assist with the back heel. And then you watch it again, it's like somebody tackled him oh, on the shit, ball. You... To him. Oh, I was going to say, no, no, it was definitely like a, a deflection. Yeah, it was definitely. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, was, yeah. it was deflection I mean. onto Hoyland. Yeah, 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 yeah. That led possible. to Hoyland scoring. Yeah, yeah. So then it's just that situation. But great finish. One taken away, anything away from the finish, but the build-up, they were lucky to get that goal. And I felt like he was the same for Rashford. As well. Actually, no, the Rashford goal was more of a one-two. Yes. Rather than a mistake. So yeah, it was the first goal that I was, that was a bit like meh. Anyone, but also, yeah, say, anyone says back heel, they are they are no, 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 mistaken. No, 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 absolutely. Because no, no, I mean back heel. Like when you watch it live, you're like, oh, what happened? And then, but then you watch the replay, you can definitely see. Yeah, yeah, yeah it, was, it was a deflection, yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Whereas uh, Bentancur as well, 50 second coming back. To, like, what did Ten Hag say to those players? They're like two one up, half time. I, I just don't know about Man United. Man United fans really need to be worried. Like, listen, I'm a Chelsea fan and I'm worried about my team, but you guys are on the mm-hmm. same boat as us. Yes. How do you concede after being 2-1 up, half-time, come back out 50 seconds, you're, you're 2-2? To be exactly. fair, Spurs should have won that for me. They were dominating the whole game. Uh, they really needed to put more pressure on United because the moment they put pressure, they scored. And we saw that, didn't we? Like 50 seconds in, like I said, 2-2, yeah. Bentanko. And then they seemed to die down. I don't know what you felt like. It was just like pass, pass, bit of bit of trickery try to do it a bit of showing off from Bentancourt and a bit of Hoyland holding the ball for longer than he should have done well, and when is, in reality he moved it quicker stats stats speak quite quite loudly and the first half um the first half it was Tottenham who was sort of dominant in, in terms of the expected goals and whatnot which again uh, you know how much I don't give a shit about that yeah. but the second half both expected goals for teams were like literally 0.6 and 0.5 Yes, Spurs had the the majority of possession, but that's all it was. That's literally all that's, it was. That's it was what I mean. Yeah. And and again, I'm sorry to say it, and I keep saying it. I will always say it as as long as I watch this Tottenham team play. They are not good. I'm sorry, but they are not good. The only thing they can do is counter attack, and that's where United went wrong. They left spaces open for them. And again, Wambasaka. He's all right sometimes, but again, he's not that great of a defender. Dalot, he made a couple of mistakes, which again could have been punished, but because it's Tottenham, it's the way of the it's yeah. the way of the Tottenham. So you know, as, as fair, Conte I, used I to say, I have a slight disagreement with you on that one. I do think they're playing some good football, to be fair. And I call this Ange guy, I really like Ange. I don't know if I'm being biased slightly because of uh, not fanboying over Ange, but quite like him the way he comes across in the media and the things he says. But also, uh, Tottenham have been doing quite well. Uh, I. For me, they just took the foot off the gas. Like they were controlling, dominating. They That's had all not the good. That's what I'm saying. This are quiet. But this is the thing again. Like he's got some injuries in that. I didn't see Bentank, uh, not Bentanku play. Sorry, I didn't see what's Kulisevsky. his name. Saar and Kulisevsky, Saar, Basu, not Basu. What's the boy that I like in midfield? Basak, it was Basu. One, which I don't know why you like him, but that's that's fine. That's no, all Because like, I like him because of that same thing as I say to you, like is when players run past a midfield player. I've seen him do that a couple of times for Spurs. Yeah, and then he started getting times, A couple of times in 22 he's, games, man. Like, <laughs> no, no, no. no I, I don't watch all the Spurs game, but the games that I have seen, I've seen him do that. And I'm like, this is what I want from my midfielders. I, rest of the games that I watched he got sent off against Luton and I think he got sent off another time and that but yeah he did alright I think he did well against you guys as well to be fair when I watched him at the Emirates and obviously Madison is missing so yeah there's things to come back for them I think they will be alright now I do think they'll finish obviously in the Champions League uh, places I think they like- will I think they'll finish in the Champions League places but I just don't think they're playing good enough football I'll be honest with you I just because the rest of them like again the top four it will be City, Liverpool, Arsenal, Tottenham I have no doubts about that because the other teams below them, either they will run out of steam <clears throat> or they not haven't been playing good enough. Like United haven't been good. Chelsea haven't been good. Newcastle are like, you know, patchy at best. Patchy yeah, at best. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you put up a good fight against Man City, but at the end of the day, you lost that match. That's three points dropped. Same so it doesn't Liverpool. matter. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? So this is this is why I think with Tottenham, again, in the last couple of seasons where you think, oh my God, Tottenham are fourth and yeah, they're a Champions League team. They're not. It's the other teams who are supposed to be Champions League teams. They haven't been good enough. Do you know what I mean? Like, and that's that's no, no, always my, my argument. I don't, I don't, I don't rate Ange that that much as much as you do. And I don't know what it is about him, which I genuinely think he will turn out to be a fraud, like like Ten Hag will. I don't think he's good enough for this for this league. We'll um, and it shows because he seems to be one dimensional. And again, I now that he doesn't have Son, he's he's really struggling. And it, it showed. It absolutely showed. He's a yeah, huge player. I don't agree. I don't disagree. I don't disagree. But then again, when you look at the United team, again, it's not if United were at the at the very peak, if they had the Ronaldos, if they like literally right at the peak of their powers, Tottenham would have just been wiped. 
absolutely would have been wiped. And again, I've seen enough Tottenham games this season to make that to to come to that conclusion. And that's just not one game or two games. I've seen enough from Tottenham this season. And I've said this how many times in the podcast I've said this about Tottenham. I've never changed my mind, and today proved no, no, no. exactly that because they are not good enough. I don't think to no, to, they've improved from to, to be yeah, serious. That's they've improved from where they have been having those defensive managers, Mourinho, Conte and all the rest of them. Like they've improved massively. They're playing better. They're playing more attacking football. And I can see why Tottenham fans will be excited, especially when some players come back. Oh, I'm sure they'll be uh, excited. Sonny coming back, uh, Madison coming back. Kulisev- I don't know why Kulisevsky didn't play today. Kulisevsky is much better than Brennan Johnson. He yeah, would have got more balls in the box. He would have took more shots. Brennan Johnson is quite weak. I don't even know why they bought him, to be fair. No, no. Is that Angus signing or is that Daniel Levy signing? I guess we'll never know. But uh, yeah, I don't for think me, I, don't, I, I, I don't think Ange signed him. To be fair, I don't. Ange probably just has no idea who Brennan Johnson is. When he was at yeah. Celtic, he had no idea who plays for Nottingham Forest at the right wing or no. something. But uh, no, nah, yeah, Madison has been a great sign for. Once they get Madison back, they'll be, I think they'll start scoring goals again because they were really scoring goals. That's why they were top of the league for a reason until they got all the injuries to the back. Well, that's another thing. Today they got the same back four. Sorry about that. I was hit the mic, but they got the same back four that they had. Uh, when they played against Chelsea with the injuries and the red cards so it's interesting to see what they do next for Spurs I don't know why we're spending so long on Spurs neither of us feel any type of way for Spurs but they've got Brighton yeah. in the prayer no sorry they've got Man City in the FA Cup on the Friday the 26th oh that's going to be a good match let's see what happens there that's going to be a good match for sure yeah um, and, and the uh, thing is I can't happening. even I can't even I can't even like look at that match and think Oh my God! This is where Spurs decide because like, every time that they play City, they always seem to like they get a result something. out of yeah. them, yeah. which is fair enough. But again, that doesn't mean anything because you've had lesser teams who've got points against City, like a Nottingham Forest. I'm sure last season no, they no, did no, the same thing, exactly. didn't they? The one match so, means nothing, but it's means a nothing. good. It's a it could be a slight indicator to see where they're at. But with so many injuries and players missing, it's again, it's not a true true uh, indicator. Um, maybe. Maybe it's just me, and I don't know what it is, but I just don't feel as strongly about Madison as a very good player. I'll be honest with you. He's a good player, but I don't think I don't, he's a yeah, very no, no, good player. No, no, I don't player. think he's very good, but I think he's been very good for them. For them. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I, I think that's what, I'm, that's what I mean, the difference in, like, he's very good for them. Same as I was saying for Conor Gallagher on the last last episode, is he's not very good, but he's been very good for us. For, well, yeah. See what I mean? Yeah. Because, again, I mean, you like, compare it to the other players that they've got. I mean, play to the starting 11 that's around, you know, comparing to the yeah. players that he's, he's got around. He's the one who's working the hardest. Madison's the one who's creating most of the goals. They've got... The Sonny was the Spurs... away, Madison was setting him up. Uh, which is fair, which is fair. Obviously, when son, when when them three come back, Kulusevski's son and Madison come back, then yeah, fair enough. Then we'll see what happens. But again, they've got players like Oli Skip. Do you know what I mean? And 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 Emil Hoiberg and that type of shit. They're just who's that just, guy that came on? The Spanish guy. And I thought it was English. Brian Gill or something. I was like Spanish. And it, it, had, it had the Spanish flag. <laughs> I know I didn't Spanish. Know Spanish neither. Yeah, I thought it was, I thought it was as English as they come, bro. I thought like he was as oh English as which, just the sauce or his fish and chips. Dude, it's, Spain it's, need to disown him. <laughs> Spain need to be like, no, no, no. Flag on there. I was like, what is going on here? No, exactly. Brian Hill and I think I made a comment on the, on the group last time I saw Brian Hill play, and I was like, this is the worst That's the player as well. like, their, ever. The team is as a squad. Sorry, apart from a starting eleven. The starting yeah, eleven that they had at the start, their squad is awful. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's, yeah. And that's what you need. Like, look at the amount of games that teams are playing. You need a good squad. Arsenal need a good squad because no, Saka's, yeah, Saka's uh, not injured, sorry, but Saka's exhausted. Can't perform. Man- Liverpool are the same. You know, like with those three midfielders, then you get thirty-eight and Jones coming in. Okay, they might do all right for one or two, but that's not players that you're going to rely on. And again, no, like a, not to win the squad league, yeah. players, you need a big squad. But what yeah. can you do? City, no, we'll City have got that squad when they are 115 uh, allegations against them. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, that's a whole different thing, isn't it? But uh, look, Rick, we've I think we've been going on for long enough, to be honest. And we need to we get have, this podcast out have. for people to listen we need to. to get it out. Yeah, um, work tomorrow we, as well. And that as well, yeah. We will be back at the uh, probably uh, during the end of the week. We'll discuss on some transfers because I know there's no football on for the next couple of weeks or 10 days, I think it is. Is that don't right? you play next week, don't you? Don't you play next week? Is it next week? Oh, is it already? Is it next week already? Fuck it. <laughs> where, where are you? How long is your sleep? I know. Where? Where am I here? Twenty. Oh yeah. So we're back on the. Oh, we're back on the weekend. Okay. So we will. We will be back we'll with some predictions. We'll probably do one Thursday night and on do a Thursday prediction. evening. Yeah. Or Friday evening. Whichever one, because obviously the first match is back on Saturday. So, yeah. So we play Brighton, I believe. Oh, did I just see that right? Did we play Brighton? Oh, Crystal no, Palace. So we play Palace. Crystal Palace yeah. Lunchtime kickoff uh, at home versus Palace. We'll come back and we'll do some predictions about that. But uh, yeah. yeah, if you have nothing else to add, mate, we will uh, we'll catch everyone on the next one.
Like, now I'm going to have to turn, mate. We'll catch everyone on the next one. I thought that was you going straight on. I was like, that's why I stayed quiet. <laughs> no, you thank you so much for listening. I was like, what's this guy do? Why is he pause? I looked up. I was we'll like, bring is him we'll, we'll, uh, we'll bring him up. We'll bring this podcast out. Yeah, we'll bring it out. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for listening. We'll, we'll catch you on the next one. And uh, yeah, if you have any questions, please hit us up on Twitter, Facebook, and we will answer them. Good night.